All right, folks, we're going to get started here with the second coming of the candidate forum for the Studio City Neighborhood Council. Things are a little tiny bit different from the last time uh, from last week. Uh, we have all, a lot of our candidates up here. Not every candidate is here, but uh, you'll hear a lot of them speak tonight. <laughs> Each will have two minutes to start to give an intro to themselves, uh, what they want to do, um, who they are, and um, all of that fun stuff. We have a lot of questions this time. I'll be calling questions, trying to combine them. I'll try to get them all out. Everyone will have an opportunity to answer all of the questions as well. This time they will, instead of 30 seconds, they'll all get 45 seconds. So we can all calm our nerves and we can all just kind of settle into things. Make sure you explain the finger countdown. The, the which count? The finger countdown. Oh, the finger <laughs> countdown too. This won't throw you guys off. For the new people on the board here, um, I may give you the 10 seconds. If you see two hands, that's 10 seconds. I know the right one's kind of scary, so the left one after the left. I'm kidding you. Okay. Uh, and then I'll give you the five second countdown as well. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. I will cut you off. You guys who were here last week know that I will. I don't mean to. I'm sorry about that. It's nothing personal, but we need to give everybody the time allotted. So again, everyone will get 45 seconds to uh, answer a question as well. Um, a question will be asked. Then I will pick a name from my little um, uh, Ziploc bag over there as far as the starting position, just to keep this fair to everybody. Again, some people aren't there, aren't here, but I still put their names in there anyways. And then we will go in a clockwise way uh, in answering. And uh, I think that's about it. So, uh, with that said, let me uh, begin this. I'll pick a name out of the hat, and this will be our first two-minute introduction. And we will see where we go from here. All right. Lisa Sarkin. So Lisa will give the first two-minute intro, and we will go clockwise, starting with Alex all the way around. And uh, you have two minutes, Lisa. Okay. And again, just for everybody, uh, because some people are seeing you for the first time, and I won't start the timer until after you say your name and what you are representing as far as residential, business, at large, or whatever. So. Lisa, with that, take the way. Lisa Sarkin, employee independent contact, uh, um, contract seat. The San Fernando Valley, American Suburbs by Kevin Roderick. Quote, arguably America's, oh my God, quintessential suburb with a long, rich history filled with all sorts of lore and traditions that make a place a home, unquote. Although other parts of the San Fernando Valley have, ur have urbanized, Studio City is family oriented with mostly single family homes backing up to Ventura Boulevard. Those of us who have lived here a long time know how special Studio City is and we intend to remain here and keep it that way. Many of you moved here because of the uniqueness of our community. As a previous land use chair, owner, uh, land use chair I have been instrumentally instrumental in keeping our corner of the valley as a suburb, suburban oasis, even though Studio City is a hub for, for over the hillside travel. Our business community is thriving because Studio City residents frequent our shops and restaurants. Patrons traveling into Studio City add to the, uh, the vibrancy and are welcomed with enthusiasm, but there is only so much space in Studio City. The lots are very small with landfill and they are not conducive to massive buildings because only one underground level is feasible. Studio City is stuck between the hillside, flood control channels, and freeways which make expansion almost impossible. The employees, including CBS, bring much needed patronage which helps make Studio City a mecca for new restaurants and entrepreneurs. Studio City is at a crossroads of which we must be vigilant in order to have a livable community where everyone is welcome while retaining the suburban feel we all love. I have a plan to continue on that path. We need a totally engaged community to make anything happen at City Hall or and beyond. Please vote for me, Lisa Sarkin, the independent contractor, to bring back the Neighborhood Council working for our stakeholders and quality of life. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alex Zbicki, and I'm uh, running for the independent contractor seat. And uh, I don't have a, uh, a prepared uh, speech because I feel we've got so much going on in our community that I can probably uh, let you know what, what, what I'd like to uh, focus on. Uh, I agree with Ms. Sarkin that we have a great community here, a great city, uh, but we are in the balance now because we have a lot of challenges 
in trying to keep our community uh, moving forward, but still at the same time uh, have that home feel. We have we have great uh, 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 a lot of greenery and a lot of a lot of wonderful aspects in our topography that we need to maintain. Of course, but still progressing. The key is right now is what we have here. We have a neighborhood council that was basically created out of the ashes of our secession movement uh, for us to uh, wanting to leave the city of Los Angeles because we didn't feel we were being represented properly. Therefore, we decided that we would actually uh, accept the city's proposal that we cre that these created uh, neighborhood councils would be the eyes and ears of our council peer persons that that work for in our city. Uh, Unfortunately, we've seen over the last few years that that hasn't really been the case, that we've become an echo chamber for the higher ups in the city, and which has totally discombobulated the structure of what we were supposed to be, which is the eyes and ears, advisory in nature, but the eyes and ears of what our community needs and what we actually demand. Unfortunately, some of the people that had been involved with our neighborhood council system over the last few years were just the opposite. They were listening to what the council office wanted, and they would impose it upon the people. I promise I won't allow that to happen, and I will always listen to you and bring forward what your needs are to our city. Thank you. I hope you'll vote for me. Hi there. My name is Jeanine Milne. I do have a prepared speech. I've lived in Studio City for over 25 years, and I am a woman's clothing designer and manufacturer. Mm -hmm. I also serve as a board member for State of Coldwater Canyon. Our board's efforts culminated in, a, in halting a massive development in Coldwater Canyon, and we are continuing our grassroots efforts in various local campaigns, including fighting fly over airport noise, protecting wildlife corridors, and keeping an eye on proposed and ongoing developments that threaten open space land. Another passion of mine is animal advocacy. For years, I've rescued dogs from the areas around the factories I work with and have been fortunate to find them wonderful homes. One is my next door neighbor and is here tonight. I also wholeheartedly participate in my community next door where a small but mighty group of us advocate for, raise money, and rescue dogs at risk from high kill shelters throughout the city. Homelessness is a major subject of concern in Studio City. Last year, I participated in a community effort to assist a veteran living in an alley with his dog. I posted on our next door, and donations came in to house this vet and his dog in a motel on the coldest of nights. A few months later, I learned that the vet and dog are in an apartment through VA housing. There are many faces of homelessness, and I know the kindness of our community and our appreciation for his service made the difference in helping this veteran off the streets. It's an honor to live in such a caring community, and it would be a privilege to serve it on Neighborhood Council as a voice and advocate for all stakeholders. Thank you. Gatorberg, we'll see you one of the recruiters to you, the Gatorberg Council. Uh, my position piece, I had it out already on uh, paper. And I'm mostly concerned with just maintaining and enhancing the quality of life in Studio City. The people here help make this happen. It's not something which is totally you can rely upon the government to do for you. Also, when it comes to dealing with council persons, I is my firm belief that we are the cover for the council people. They make an unpopular decision. They say, well, six neighborhood councils said we should do this. And bless them off the hook. I've got a number of um, uh, city council and committee meetings to try to enforce this idea. The city is doing very well already, but they can do much better. Thank you. Uh, I'm Alexis Steinberg. I'm running for service organization seat. Um, I've been a resident of Studio City for 31 years now. Um, I'm not even 31 years old. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was born and raised in Studio City, and when it came time for me to buy my first home, I determined that I never wanted to leave, and so I bought in Studio City, and now I've been a, a two-year homeowner um, in Studio City, and I've watched Studio City develop over the years, and I remember when 
um, we had Harry's cameras on Ventura Boulevard. And I remember when the open lot at Colfax and Ventura used to be a Volvo dealership. I mean, these were decades ago and the memories that I have of Studio City. Um, it has grown and has developed. Um, and Studio City has really become a hub for not only uh, new families, but for nightlife, for development, for trendy restaurants, as I've heard um, you know, people say. And uh, I really want to work to keep the charm of Studio City. I want to work to bring a new, fresh perspective, but with the understanding of what the history of Studio City is and what it stands for and what our community um, wants and needs. And I'm really excited to be a part of a potential part of this board and really bring my efforts to Studio City and help in any way that I can. And so I hope that um, I can have your support. Hi, I'm Rebecca Kaplan. Um, I'm running for the community. Um, I've lived in Studio City for the last uh, over 20 years and I raised two children um, who went to the local schools. Um, I'm running to basically help create a community that's more kid friendly. Um, and for that, I'm welcoming you to do a small exercise. If you sort of just observe the children who are playing in Lima, and in particular their age group, and ask yourself, where are our elementary school children? Um, so basically, I'm running to um, help people understand that children are not raised just by their parents, but by the whole village. Um, so um, I will appreciate the you offering your support. Um, my name is Nancy Kramer, and I'm running for the whole lot of seat. I moved from Minnesota to Los Angeles in 1998 and found myself in Studio City. It reminded me the most of the suburbs of Minneapolis. Walking dogs, pushing strollers, all that. Um, and I've lived here ever since. I had a home and uh, purchased a home in 2001 in Studio City. I actually don't have an agenda for the Studio City Council, except to implement the parliamentary procedures to make the meetings run more efficient, smoothly. So everyone knows the rules that we're not fighting about how to get things done, we're fighting about what to get, right? Um, although I do love Studio City and I would hate to see it. Nothing can change, because like, whatever it is. I'm going to take off the side. Um, one more minute. I don't have anything else. I don't have anything else. Vote for me. Thank you. My, my name is Eric Previn, and I am running the residential homeowner seat. And I'm going to talk a little bit about myself because I hopefully will get a chance to talk about Studio City as we go on through the evening. But I've lived in Studio City since 1985. I first I moved here from New York, although actually I was living in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where I went to the University of Michigan and graduated with a psychology degree. Came out here for a weekend and got hired at NBC Burbank working on a soap opera. So I was the you know runner delivery person. So I got a real acquaintance to Los Angeles because I was driving around in a Toyota, you know. Corolla delivering scripts to people back when we would deliver scripts around the city. And um, I had a great job working at, on this soap opera and I rose quickly as became a line producer because I was um, you know, too stupid to get a go with the program. I would speak up and the producer said, good point, you know, when I was busting the guy in props for buying cigarettes. I was like, sir, you can't buy cigarettes with the prop money. And you know, the, but they liked that because it was helping to. So that's when I became sort of an early watcher. But I, I continued to work in television. I became a writer, uh, which is a hard wall to get over because I was already a line producer, which is a different kind of thing. And um, you know, it was great. I got hired on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno with some very talented Alexander Wentworth, one minute left. And you know, it was a, a great career in television and I became an international consultant. I did some things I'm very proud of, like stuck the Daily Show with Jon Stewart in Scandinavia during an election time, which was a big, you know, interesting thing for them to see since it made no sense to them, but it was also a fascinating and popular show. And then I started to become more interested in, you know, local government and my time in Studio C, which I love. Throughout this time I raised a family here. I have two children who went to this park and park and drive in school and Oakwood and Campbell Hall, and I started to fall in love with being home 
and caring about what's happening right in our midst. And there were a lot of changes, and we're going to hear about more of them tonight. But my, my hope now is to help be a part of the future of students. And I look forward to your vote on May 16th. Thank you. Hey, Rick Rosner, I'm owner. It's my birthday, so I get one free dumb answer. <laughs> this is our second candidate forum, and a couple of the themes of the first one were Studio City is a good place to live, and we need to keep it that way, and, and work, and, you know, and, and play. And two, that we need to increase outreach, the flow of information from the council to everybody in Studio City, and from everybody in Studio City back to the council, and, and between the, the, the big city council, the LA, you know, too. Um, so, and we, you may have noticed that the world is, is pretty weird right now, and it's only gonna keep getting weirder. And it, you know, our job should be to keep Studio City an oasis, even as the world changes around it, and even as LA might, you know, get, might become a less and less great place to live. We've got the Olympics coming in nine years, which will make the whole world look at, at LA and at Studio City. And we can do a lot with increased information and outreach. For instance, you may not know that Studio City is radioactive. The hill that runs you know, through our town has high radon levels. I had to live here for 10 years before I accidentally found that out. And we can you know, help people. Be oh, also this place here, this building in this park is in the early, well, it, it should be in the middle stages, but it's in the early stages of what right now is gonna be a $16 million renovation. People don't know that. I didn't know it until I joined the Government Affairs Committee. All right, thanks. Hi, I'm Denise Welbe. I'm a homeowner. Um, I'm Phil Morrissey. I'm currently on the board. Uh, I've been in a variety of different committees, currently on the land use, um, and uh, I'm on you know, the cultural affairs. Um, and we've lost touch, I think, with a lot of our um, stakeholders. Uh, we haven't been listening, uh, we haven't been giving them time. We have to get back into to finding out what it is that you would like in Studio City. We all know that we came here for a reason. We like Studio City the way it is. Um, there are going to be some changes here, but we can mold the changes to be more in keeping what we want. But we need to reach out to all of the stakeholders in Studio City find out what they need. Um, our outreach has been a little bit low. Um, and we used to go to the farmer's market and greet everybody and face to face and say, hi, how you doing? You know, how are things? You know, what could we do better? We are the conduit between you and the city council. Everything comes from you through us to them. And we really need to get back to finding out what it is we're supposed to be doing, what you want to do, and where we can make better to live in the Studio City. Um, we're now a hub for dining. Um, that means people come from over the hill, out in the valley, they all come here. Um, parking is becoming an issue because we've cut restaurants and nowhere to park. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can do that we need to look at to make things better. And I hope to participate in that. Thank you. Richard Adams, business seat. Um, like I said on, on the candidates page, which I urge all of you to check out, hopefully the election committee has pushed out what the URL is for that. And then taking a look at my picture and my statement will tell you more about me and my dedication, hard work, and willingness to sacrifice. It also explains why I'm a, 20, I'm a service disabled veteran and why I'm not jumping up and putting my poor needs to uh, even more abuse. I don't have a prepared statement, but as you can see, I've been in healthcare too long. I write like a doctor these days. Um, the neighborhood council needs to fo focus and regain a reputation for honesty, integrity, and duty. You know, we, need, uh, we need to focus on community needs and concerns. 
you know, and committees, you know, not and less effort on personal people's pet peeves. Oh my God, this is interesting. It's the only thing I'm focused on. You know, we need committees that focus on their missions and response purposes that affect everyone. And, and you know, things like uh, we need to focus on SB 50, which if you haven't heard of, you need to look up. It's a bill in the California legislature which will mandate statewide height and density requirements that would completely destroy not just Studio City, but the entire valley and even a good portion of LA County. It's ridiculous. That's more important to this neighbor, should be more important to this neighborhood council than worrying about things like election funding. Um, what affects one class of stakeholders, which everyone you might be in, affects all of us. For too long, this neighborhood council has had business seats on it, but it hasn't really focused on the business district. We need the bid and the Chamber of Commerce to do that. We need to work with those people. They're our natural allies. They can help us with outreach to the community. They can also help us identify problems that is the purpose of the neighborhood council to address and bring to whoever we need to bring it to. And what if the business district is depressed because you know empty, empty spaces, closed storefronts, drags down the neighborhoods around it. The problems they have, are the problems we have, and we need to work together. Thank and that's you. what I pledge to do. Uh, I am Patrick Lewis. I'm running for a wrench. I'm not going to take up two minutes. Um, I'd rather, I think we should just get to the questions. Hi, y'all. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Hi, my name is Brian Carroll. I'm running for the residential renter seat, one of three. Uh, I'm current serving vice president of the board. Uh, unfortunately, some, I would assume most of the people in this room cannot vote for me, but I want to address everybody anyway. Uh, only renters can vote for other renters, unfortunately. Um, we all care about Studio City, but when we're choosing a neighborhood council, and, and when we look to the next two years, we're going to want people who have a history and a record of showing up. And all I want to say today is that on May 16th, if you are a renter, I hope that you give me your vote because I show up. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Jesse Porter. I'm also running for the uh, residential renter seat along with these two gentlemen and uh, three others. Um, as all of us uh, here know, the uh, changing uh, demographic character of Studio City um, uh, brings with it uh, challenges and uh, opportunities for those who um, live and work here, as do the uh, changing physical landscape of Studio City, uh, as Lisa was making reference to earlier, and uh, the influences of broader trends uh, within the city at large. Um, as a longtime Valley resident, uh, I have uh, lived, uh, worked, shopped, exercised, and uh, dined uh, essentially within a block of uh, Ventura Boulevard for the past uh, decade and a half. Um, and so I've become acutely aware and, um, and observed the, uh, the, the evolving and uh, changing nature of our community and the effects of those uh, evolutions on, um, on, on, on the stakeholders. Uh, my, my three goals uh, as a current uh, incumbent member of the board and as a candidate on May 16th uh, are, um, number one, to, uh, to strive to preserve uh, Studio City's essential character, which I would define as uh, its historic nature, as uh, Alexis was making reference to earlier, um, its walkability, uh, safety for cyclists and pedestrians, as well as access to and preservation of green space within Studio City. Uh, two, a compassionate and humanistic approach to the issue of homelessness. And uh, three, um, uh, the, the, the cultivation of a, uh, a business and economic uh, presence within Studio City that addresses the needs of homeowners, renters, and homeless residents alike. Um, I uh, humbly uh, ask not just for your vote on May 16th, but for your continued participation, engagement, and, um, and dialogue. Thank you. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Benjamin Belke. I actually I go by Benji. Uh, most of the time I wrote a couple of notes down, so nothing really formal. Um, I live down the street over here off uh, Sarah Street, so just actually within walking distance, but I was lazy and drove. Um, I actually also come from Minnesota, uh, so I grew up in the St. Paul area, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, but I've been here for about eight years now. Um, I, live with, I live with my husband, who's actually um, at a board meeting for NoHo Home Alliance, which uh, this committee was so generous uh, with appropriation of some funds. Um, the reason why I'm running is um, I kind of looked around uh, what was going around in this uh, community and the world, and I saw a lack of uh, participation in the community. 
I think that's something um, to bring more people in. Um, I, I think that that is what our community needs. Um, I really like the reference to the, um, the farmer's market earlier. I think we need to connect um, to our community. Also, I think homelessness is a huge um, issue, and there's, there are compassionate ways um, that don't disrupt um, too much, by, uh, but also uh, are compassionate by nature. And um, I also, like on a more general basis, uh, basis to um, make Studio City a place uh, that has similar cachet to um, like Beverly Hills, not not like necessarily like uh, it's like better than anything, but also something that's known, I think, throughout the, the community and, and the world. Because I'm very proud to live here, um, and I couldn't think of living anywhere else. So, um, hope you uh, vote for me as an at-large member on May 16th. Oh, it's been wonderful. All the time, too. I love it. All right, so uh, we are now at the uh, question and answer, 45-second uh, portion of this. So um, before I uh, pull the name out of the hat and make it fair for everybody, first question is, uh, I'm going to mash some up together. We're all aware that this takes a lot of time. It's a volunteer position that does take a lot of time. Uh, with that, this is a question some of you have answered before. Some of you are new, so uh, we'll answer this now. Uh, with the time commitment, uh, what committees have you participated in the past, if you're already on the board? Uh, what would you uh, take part in if you are to become a new board member? And also with things like some uh, people said here, uh, reaching out and joining the farmer's market. Reaching out, will you take place, uh, will you take extracurricular activity in the Studio City Neighborhood Council, hand out flyers, get the word out as well. So, with that question, which is probably a three part, sorry about that. <coughs> All right, let's see. The lucky name is Brian Carroll, Rentals. We'll start with you and then we'll do uh, clockwise as well. <laughs> so, in terms of time commitment, I dedicate a lot of time currently uh, to this board. I'm currently, I'm part of five different committees. I'm the chairman of two of them, the vice chair of another one, I'm the current sitting vice president. As I said before, my, my entire thesis of my identity is that I show up to these things and I have a great stake in this community. Uh, I do have a problem, I guess, with delegation, but that's just because I do just kind of dive into this to get my hands dirty. Uh, if re-elected, my goal is to just continue that streak and to start tackling some of the bigger ideas that we have. Thank you. Uh, Jesse Porter, uh, renter seat. Um, I've been on the board now for uh, just about three months, um, and the committees uh, that I've attended during that time, uh, the bu budget committee, uh, as well as um, uh, the uh, uh, prior, uh, previously attending the uh, land use committee and public safety committee meetings at various points. Um, if re-elected, I'd like to participate uh, more actively with the homelessness committee, as well as the uh, sustainability committee. I'm very um, uh, uh, interested to see the recent um, uh, sustainability committee agenda that went out and, and the important work um, that's, uh, that's going on over there. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, very, the, uh, the leaf blower thing is just a wonderful uh, rabbit hole we can all go down and, and, I, and I'm, I, I think that that committee is going to be doing a lot of important work on that front. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, Benjamin Belke. Uh, so I'm not, not actually uh, familiar with all the different committees. Uh, the sustainability and homeless committee sounded interesting to me as well. Um, the one thing I would say is I'd probably limit myself to either one or max two just because of time constraints. Uh, and that's because I want to put all focus within those different initiatives. Um, the other thing that I would like to be involved in is the digital side. Um, my job is in marketing technology, so um, just pushing out like different initiatives that were happening. I don't think a lot of people heard about this event. I know that uh, you guys did a great job of organizing the event, but it's just about pushing that on the digital side and then also showing up to things that have high visibility, like farmers markets. So. I'm not going to stand up my back certain means. So the bylaws require that every neighborhood council board member give 10 hours a year to all the any of the events, at least 10 hours a year. Everyone has to be on at least one committee. You don't have to be the chair, but you have to be on at least one committee. Uh, and you have to attend the board meetings. So however many hours that is, I'm not actually sure, but that's what's required. I was the vice president, the president, I was the president for two months, the vice president, 
corresponding secretary, the land use chair, I was on the government affairs committee, I was on the bylaws committee, I was on the um, cultural affairs committee, and also one other one, but that's not important. I don't even know if it's still going on. But anyway, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get more people interested in the neighborhood council again. Hi, I'm Alex Zbicki for the um, independent contractor seat. Uh, it's really important to be present. Uh, part of my tenure uh, on the board, I was working with uh, Safe Kawarta Canyon, and we had a huge responsibility in, in, in staving off the, uh, the uh, Harvard Westlake proposal. Uh, that took a lot of time, but in the meantime, I was part of a, a, a bylaws committee and, uh, in this, and also our uh, safety committee as well. The issue is being present, but it's also uh, making sure that people that are present aren't looking for some type of payback in the sense of favors and being in, embedded with some special interest. So I'm really excited about this new group of people that are running. Um, I do believe we need fresh blood, and I would hope that you would look into incumbents as well, but make sure that we tap into this energy. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I am Janine and Milne, and um, Committee. I, I am currently on the board as an appointed member um, for about the la almost the last year. I actually used it on the ad hoc election committee that is part of what you're stating tonight, and I have also been on the outreach committee. So we, um, our committee revamped the Studio City website. We reinvigorated our Instagram account. Um, we go to a lot of the events that occur. P22, et cetera, and our board chairs host on next door the events of the Neighborhood Council. Um, I have to say I too have my eye really on the Sustainability Committee. I think that um, what Brian is doing there is a, it's a very exciting committee, and that's where I'll be directed. Thank you. <laughs> Richard Niederberg, I've been on the Neighborhood Council for 10, 12 years, maybe longer. Started out this adventure in 1998 when I went to the Municipal Convention of Neighborhood Councils before they even had neighborhood councils. We decided what we're going to be doing, and the first rule was it's not going to be a representative democracy, it's going to be an actual do-it-yourself type democracy. I have been uh, I'm currently on the uh, uh, Cultural Affairs Attorney and have been for at least in the it's a decade. I was formerly the head of the uh, budget committee when uh, Michael Cosman was the treasurer. I've also been on bylaws, currently on trip on uh, um, budget, and have also been on uh, many other committees. Also, thank you. Um, Alexis Steinberg, service organization seat. Uh, prior to my ability to run, my mother sat on the council for many years, and I was her Hillary Clinton to her bill, if you will, um, as she sat on many committees um, and kind of helped and guided her and, and gave my two cents and my opinion. And so uh, committees that interest me, land use, bylaws, uh, I'm an attorney, so I feel that I have the ability to really contribute with my skill um, in ordinances and bylaws and stuff like that um, and interpreting uh, the rules of ordinances of Studio City and especially Los Angeles. Um, and I'm eager to participate, go out to farmers markets, which I do every Sunday anyways, um, and be part of the community. Hi, um, I've been involved in volunteering uh, with different homeless uh, programs in Santa Monica, Skid Row, and Studio City for approximately 10 years. Um, I volunteer in hospice programs and I'm currently running three parent meetings at a, um, I contacted a local um, a business that offered me free space um, and unfortunately it's not in Studio City, although it's a Studio City resident, it's Steampunk, a great place in, um, on Burbank. Um, I am willing to participate and to help uh, this council in any way they need me um, and I promise to hold space for families. Uh, Nancy Kramer, homeowners. In 2012, my youngest graduated from high school and it created a lot of white space in my life and I decided that was time for me to give back to the community. 
At that time, I started participating in government, um, realized the need for, to be trained as a parliamentarian, so I became a legal uh, official parliamentarian. Um, became active, my first situation was with on a grievance committee here at the Studio City Neighborhood Council, and ever since then, I've been serving on the bylaws committee for under the past three administrations. I was currently three, about three months ago, appointed to secretary, and I'm interested in continuing to serve on the executive board, along with the Royal House. Eric Previn, residential homeowner, and um, I serve on the Government Affairs Committee, which in October of last year, uh, we realized we'd invited one of two candidates and decided, oops, we should invite them both, and had a forum at the library that was incredible. It was attended by a lot of uh, politicians running for office uh, on the November ballot, and it led to some other forums which have been varying success. Sometimes we invite a particular group, like the aviation issue in the airport was great, the mental health director from LA County was great, and sometimes we just hear from the folks, but they've been really fun and exciting. That's GAC. Bylaws, we tried to change the rules to uh, make it easier to vote. We didn't get there quite. We did change it, but we couldn't get them approved. And finally, I'm also, I served on the budget committee for six months and uh, the ad hoc election. Rick, homeowner on the Government Affairs Committee, where I'll continue to be, even if I don't get elected to the overall board. And if there ever is a tech committee, I'll join that. Uh, but to be honest with you, two weeks after I signed up to be a candidate, I was diagnosed with cancer, and I'm waiting on the uh, UCLA uh, surgery robot, which has a long waiting list. So I'm, right now, I'm highly distracted. Um, <laughs> Once that's resolved, I, I think that I'll be more focused on this. And I'm a comedy writer, I've been writing for TV for 30 years, but right now I'm solidly unemployed, which once I quit being distracted will give me a lot of time to focus on this. Hi, I'm Denise Hallmark. Um, I've been on the board for a few years, so I've been on a few committees, and use uh, government affairs, uh, budget committee, um, a wide variety uh, of committees. I was like, probably the only ones that I haven't been on are transportation, a homeless because it's new, sustainability because it's new. Um, but wherever the uh, need is, uh, this is a, a time, you have to understand that it takes time. Um, this isn't a, just a walk in, you know, listen to what's happening and vote and go home. Um, we research what, we, what we're supposed to be voting on and when we get to the meeting, we are part of the conversation and we participate, so. Um. Richard Adams, uh, Business C. There's exactly one person at this table that has more continuous time working with the neighborhood council than myself, and one person out there in the audience has more continuous time working with the neighborhood council. I've been on or chaired just about every committee we have. Homeless didn't exist until recently. I've never been on cultural affairs. Richard Kneeberg has that nailed down. I haven't been on land use, but I've been an advisory chair for land use, not once, but twice. And uh, I haven't been on transportation, but I'm a routine participant. I'm currently only on sustainability, but that wasn't my choice. It was somebody else's who exercised their power and doesn't want me involved. So make of that what you will. But my record speaks for itself. I will be involved. I have plenty of time. And I'm always the first to show and the last to go, and I've got the only pickup truck here. Thank you. Uh, so my dad always used to say that if you want something done, give it to the guy with no time to do it. So I'll just run through real quick. In my three years uh, on the council, I have been the vice president, the budget committee chair. I was the homeless liaison to the HHH implementation for the uh, mayor's office. I'm currently president in the real world. I have two young boys, one of which has special needs, which requires me to drive them all around the valley. Therapy appointments all week. I manage a restaurant. I also have an acting career, which is why I have the mustache. I do not think this looks good. This is for a role. Um, and my wife is currently getting her master's while also running a photography business and working at Studio City's own Batellos four nights a week. So I don't mind the time. And that's back to the top of the key. All right. Um, you guys are doing wonderful. Thank you very much uh, for being quick and succinct. Uh, we will, uh, the next few questions may be really fast. So. Um, the first question I will ask uh, is, are you a member of the BID, which is the Business District, or the SCRA? And if so, what committees are you on that organization? 
SR, SCRA is, one more time? Studio City Residents Association. Association. Thank you very much. Are you on the Business District or the Studio City Residents Association? If so, what committees are you on with that organization? Um, use your time or not? Up to you. <coughs> Michael DeLazer, I hear. Raymond J. Magno III, at large, not here. He's at work. Randall Fry. Free Fry. He's in Israel. Should priest learn to have another meeting. Ah, Lisa Garajian. All right, well, at least we're getting to these guys. Ah, Joey Thompson. All right. Keep looking at him for a reason. Well, it's good to get some Look at this. Casey Gore. Yeah, that's exactly what's good. I'm just getting rid of him. We're just getting right to it. Richard Niederberg, we got him. All right, so uh, Richard, um, again, the question is, are you a member of the SCRA or the BID? If so, what committees are you on with that organization? I'm a member of the uh, SCRA, have been for, oh, 44, 45 years, something like that, <laughs> ever since uh, Gansom was head of it. Um, also, I was on the committee dealing with land use for the SCRA before the what neighborhood council? I also was one of the instrumental people in putting in the interim control ordinance, which was the predecessor to the current specific plan we have in Studio City. Is there another question? Uh, no, that was it. Well done. Okay. Uh, Alexis Steinberg, Service Organization C, and I am a member of the SCRA. <laughs> I can tell, just tell everybody no, so everyone can oh, see it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's for Duca. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're all good. Don't worry. And, um, I'm, I'm going to go next. Okay, I'm Nancy Kramer, homeowner, um, and I am not, but I am in the choir at St. Francis de Sales. <laughs> Eric Previn, residential homeowner, not a member of SCRA, and not a member of the BID, but I am a member of, you know, the YMCA and... <laughs> you know, other organizations in town, um, including the WGA, which is my union, and um, I, I was a coach here, so I like the SCRA. They had their this year's meeting, and they honored Jessica at the Sportsman's Lodge, which was caught me off guard because I didn't know that they met there, but that is a, um, it's an organization that's well respected. There are a couple thousand members, they pay $10 to join, and they have influential leaders who speak to the council district and others. They're very close to the council district office. Rick, so, homeowner, not a member of either, but I do belong to the uh, Sugarfish Birthday Club. You get free sushi <laughs> on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good club. I like that one. <laughs> Richard Adams, business seat. Uh, I work out of the house. And the property is outside the bid district, but I am in, have in the past and will be in the future working with Vicki and the rest of the bid and the chamber. I am not a member of the SCRA, but I know a lot of the leadership and I've worked with them and around them for years. They're very vital to the neighborhood. But when I moved here, there was a choice, bid or SCRA, and I mean not bid, but neighborhood council. And the neighborhood council is direct to the city, whereas the SCRA is even more advisory and you know, less official than the neighborhood council, so I devoted all my energy to this one, but they need to be paid attention to, and we're much better off working with them than going at loggerheads. No. <laughs> uh, Brian Carroll, renter. Uh, I'm not a member of BID or the SCRA. Uh, the last thing I would want to do is divide my time and distract myself from the Studio City Neighborhood Council. Uh, Jesse Porter, no, I'm not a member of uh, Bader or the SCRA, but uh, WGA as well and Sugarfish as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, Benjamin Belke, um, not Arsili Belke. I'm, I'm not a member of either. Um, I probably would have interest in the SCRA, if nothing else, from a liaison perspective, but I have enjoyed it at this point. Lisa Sarkin, I'm a member of the SCRA. I'm the land use chair currently. Uh, I'm involved with the bid because I am the appointee from Councilmember Corian's office to the Ventura Cahuenga Boulevard Corridor Specific Plan Review Board. I'm Alex Zbicki. I'm not part of BID or the SCRA, even though I do attend their meetings and they have better cookies than we do. Um, but uh, no, I don't, I'm not involved with any of the city uh, uh, 
for organizations, I feel that it's a slight conflict of interest uh, from our constituents. Service Organization C. I have been a member of the SCRA for many years, and I know I attended some of the very first meetings for the what was then known as the Studio City Golf and Tennis, and fighting off um, the development of that very precious property. As um, a board member of Safe Cold Water Canyon, we liaise on a lot with the Residents Association and will be liaisoning quite a bit with them on the um, development that will be in the future for what is now known as the Weddington property. And again, a very, very precious parcel in Studio City. The last 17 acres that's undeveloped. Thank you very much. And we are done back to Richard. And uh, all right, I think one thing on the back of your sheets are all the different organizations you can be a member of and vote for any of us. Thank you. All right, so the next question before I um, you know, use your time, or maybe it's that quick. Uh, the purpose of the NC Neighborhood Council is to advise our council member right now, Corian. Have you ever met the council member or his staff? Anything more than a handshake? Have you ever spoken to council member Corian and what is your interaction with him? And the name, Nancy Kramer. Okay, yes, Nancy Kramer, homeowner. So um, I have actually sat down and spoken a lot, a uh, couple of times with the Adrian Nazari and our assembly representative. I've also had multiple sit downs with Mike Antonovich when he was on uh, the Board of Supervisors um, for the LA County. And I actually, in 2012 13, with a group of four people, removed 30,000 deceased voters off of our voter rolls in LA County, which was a very fabulous thing. But I have not had dealings with the city council, and I look forward to it. Eric Previn, residential homeowner. Um, yes, I certainly know Councilman Corian. Uh, he is, uh, as I said the other night, one of the better council members from the city of Los Angeles. I also know his staff. Um, I, I know Caro Tarosian, who is his chief of staff. And Doug Bensman is his transportation guy, and obviously Jessica, who's our, our local rep, uh, and some others as well. Because, uh, you know, I've not always had uh, a warm and cozy relationship because some of the stuff that we've been working on in Studio City has been uh, protective of the things that we have and need to keep like they are. And we've been successful. I'm now uh, talking with his office about the 40 mile an hour on Colfax and Whitsitt, that, as you know, is uh, worrisome. But we'll see. Thank you. I haven't been Gregorian or his staff. I, uh, Denise, homeowner, um, I've had numerous conversations uh, with uh, Paul Kokorian um, and his staff, and I also uh, know and speak with Adrian. Um, they're very nice people. They're, they're interested in what we do, and they want to hear from us. I know the councilman. I know Adrian. I know the councilman staff, and not just Jessica. A couple of them are actually personal friends that I see off-duty off hours. Um, I'm one of the few people that the staff admits it who has ever apologized to the councilman in writing and in public at one of our meetings because I've been led to believe that A was true when I found out it wasn't. And apparently there's a joke running around that they took my written one and framed it as a unique example of stakeholder involvement. Uh, as I drive around the council district and I have a map of it, I go over to North Hollywood and everywhere else and I call into the office every time I see things because as a trained cat scout, and uh, infantrymen, I see things other people don't. <laughs> and I'm aware of it, and staff, they call me their unpaid field deputy. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, um, yeah I, I meet with Jessica usually about once a week. Um, I've had several meetings with Kikorian. I have one coming up. Um, we recently had a meeting of all the presidents of the Valor of North Hollywood Valley Village, I guess the, there's three North Hollywood neighborhood councils and we all had a meeting with him that of course turned into just a homeless chit chat and wasn't very productive. Um, yeah, I feel like I have a pretty good relationship with their office actually. Outside of the, just the normal functioning of the board meetings, uh, I have not. Uh, likewise, I've been on the board for uh, not too long now and I've not developed a relationship with the council yet, but I look forward to it. Uh, I haven't developed a relationship, but we did, uh, I did reach out to him a few years ago. We had um, a condo building that went up. Um, we were asking for some concessions on some like offsets um, around the condo building. 
it was a little bit of a tepid <laughs> response. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think that's one of the things that we really need to do is develop that relationship so that we can actually balance out high density and low density um, housing to really maintain the, um, the community as a good city on both sides, really. Did they ask you to go to the Studio City Neighborhood Council? I, I think we did go. That's about three years ago. Okay. Yes, of course, I know Councilmember Corey, and I've been on the board. I've been the president, the vice president, the chair of the Land Use Committee. I'm also <coughs> appointee, as I said before, to the Ventura Specific Plan Plan Review Board. Um, I know everyone on his staff, and I'm happy that he's our council member. Uh, I have met him under uh, different scenarios uh, with Safe Corridor Canyon. We've met with uh, the councilman. Jessica, his, his, his uh, assistant there, is just an amazing person who listens. Uh, again, uh, I like to have a great relationship with our councilman, but I don't want it to be cozy to the point of where directives from him and wishes from him will, will uh, trickle down to our constituents, especially if they don't want it. So I just uh, want to keep a watchful eye on that. Jimmy Milne, um, I, I know the council um, through, honestly, board meetings in the state of Coldwater Canyon. I cannot say that I have a close relationship with him. And um, however, I agree with Alex and his feelings about Jessica. She is really an excellent field deputy. And I do have a nice relationship with her. And I also agree with Alex that you know, it's great to have a working relationship with the council office, but sometimes the stakeholders don't necessarily want what city council wants, and so we need to be able to tell them that. Richard Niederberg, I've had a very satisfactory relationship with Mr. Corian. I've been to his office a number of times. I remember when he was the assembly person for a remote district. Uh, job that now Mr. Nazarian seems to be doing. And I've been to his office five times also. I've always had luck in getting what I wanted from him because I don't ask for unreasonable things. <laughs> Alexis Steinberg, service organization seat. Uh, I've co-hosted many a fundraiser for Paul. Um, I know Adrian personally as well. Um, and as recently as a few weeks ago, uh, saw Paul um, I also work with Paul in my professional career as an attorney, um, working with him on uh, Los Angeles ordinances and drafting new ordinances for the city. Um, and so I'm on uh, a constant communication with him and the rest of the city council members, um, in addition to uh, Herb Weston, who is the city president. I'm running for uh, the residential homeowner seat. Um, I never met the council, but I have been to his office and met with Jesse Allen with other residents on the issues with the homeless um, encampments on Valley Park and some of the issues related to uh, filming in the neighborhood. Uh, I found them quite responsive. Um, uh, although they did mention uh, that the neighborhood council could benefit from being more active within the community in, in connecting with the community and its needs. Okay. You are first. All right. Um, again, we're moving really fast, which is lovely. I'm going to hit the nail on the head right now for everyone here. Are you working for or with any LA City official in any capacity? Are you working currently with any LA City official in any capacity? Uh, with the exception of LAPD, would you be willing to sign a statement of disengagement from all such activity? If so, if you need me to repeat the question, I will. Uh, names. First. Can we define what the term we're answering a yes or no on? Um, are you working for or with any LA City official in any capacity? Any official capacity? Okay, define working with. Because me calling the council office, is that working with an official? Yeah. Define whether or not it's volunteer or if it's paid. Okay? Okay, that's what you're asking. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so yeah, well, let's define. Right. Because everyone has said something about meeting people, but now are we employed by them, we, or are we volunteering with them? So, with that said, Alexis Steinberg, you are first. Uh, I am not employed or directly working with or paid by the city council. 
Um, I am an attorney and work for an independent private firm. A lot of what I do is surrounding cannabis law. And so I am working directly with the city as a consultant um, to advise them as to what the ordinance needs to look like to preserve our city, not have dispensaries on every corner, but to do justice for the industry as well. Um, and so I've been working very closely with the city council for about mm, two years now, um, but I am not paid by them, nor am I on any sort of committee or role with them. Nancy Kramer, homeowner. Uh, I am not. I am not. I work in Hollywood. I work in the entertainment industry. Every every interaction I've had with a government official is as an independent stakeholder pursuing a passion as a stakeholder. Rick Riven, residential homeowner, and I work for Paul Kikori. No, of course not. <laughs> I'm a writer and a local resident. I'm not, I am connected to a number of city people because I, as a journalist I interact with them and uh, I know a lot of them, but I certainly do not work for them. That would be unthinkable in my line of work and it would be, um, you know, not necessarily unovercomable. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in one of us had a fundraiser for it. That's kind of interesting. But I still think that's permissible, even though it raises the brow if you're interested in that kind of thing. But I certainly have not worked for either the council member or any city officials. Rick, homeowner, I don't work with them. I'd sign a statement to that effect. Denise, um, I do not work with them. They do not pay me, and I have no desire to work for them. Richard Adams, business. My personal ethics prohibit me from working with politicians. Um, the, the level of hazmat gear you have to wear to interact with them is just intolerable. I've got enough of that working with chemo doing chemical warfare in the Army. So, no, and if I did work for them, I'd actually have some money in my bank account. So, no, I have never worked for them other than the usual volunteer stuff you hear up here. And uh, I'm also not a member of the hair club for that. So, you got that going for you. Uh, this, this is... I mean, this is such a useless question. Sorry to whoever wrote it, but this, this, this is this kind of like weird paranoia that circles around these things is such a turnoff for the average person. It just really is. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> right? Uh, I also don't work for any city official or I'm an animator and a cartoonist. That's pretty much where I'm at. Uh, yes, I also don't work for uh, a city official, and I'll I'll sign any statement to that effect. I'll sign it multiple times if necessary. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. I have no desire for the slightest. I don't work for anyone except my husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Well, uh, I don't either. I don't work for anyone. I don't fundraise for anyone. I don't I don't represent anyone that works for the city, nor do I want to uh, carry what their narrative might be, which a few of these, uh, my fellow uh, candidates do, in my opinion. And that's something we need to really be careful about because if we're gonna reflect exactly what the city wants us to do, then what's the point of having a neighborhood council? We might as well just wrap up and just listen to our council office. The point of our council, our neighborhood council, is to be independent and to be self-acting and making decisions that we can bring forth to our council office and not the other way around. And being tied in with that makes it very hard to do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Janine Milley, um, no, I do not work for the city. I'm a women's clothing designer and manufacturer, and nor do I fundraise nor sit as an advisory to any of them. I agree with Alex. It's the, the neighborhood council, as I understand it, is to be a bottom of organization where we represent the stakeholders to city council. Un uncensored, undirected by city council. So, um, and, and that partnership is what I think is really necessary, and I'm happy to sign the document. Yes, I'll sign the document. No, I don't work for any of these people, with the exception of that as the original and longest mediator in the resolution program um, in the city attorney's office. Every year we have to do the uh, National Night Out, which I'm happy to do basically. So I'm representing an office, but not a person. 
I happen to write the legislation that would enable it, so I don't want to chicken out now. All right, back to the top. All right. Okay. Now we'll get a little bit longer. Um, Studio City is known for its thriving business district, mainly along the Ventura Boulevard corridor down there, um, as well as residents living close by. There are times when the two butt heads, for example, noise complaints from uh, patrons uh, exiting these bars late, or the numerous patrons crossing Ventura Boulevard in the darkness, making it um, somewhat hazardous to be driving even. So what do you feel is the role of the SCNC in its balance between businesses and residences? And the name? The lucky first person would be. Jesse Porter. Yeah, no. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's, a, it, it's obviously a, a crucial balance for us to be able to strike. Um, and I, I, I certainly believe that it's uh, uh, one of the most important roles that the, the board uh, uh, fulfills. Um, it's an interesting point you made, uh, Mike, about the uh, pedestrians crossing the street, you know, willy-nilly late at night. Um, obviously, we know that in Studio City, the, uh, we don't have quite the police presence that uh, could be potentially useful in um, addressing some of the, the issues related to late night, you know, speeding and drag racing that takes place along Ventura Boulevard. It's not safe for drivers, it's not, it's not safe for pedestrians, certainly not for cyclists. Um, I think that uh, as a board, we should consider questions related to um, additional crosswalks as necessary, yeah, lighting, or things of that nature. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so what I wonder with these types of disputes, is actually I sat in a couple weeks ago, at, there was a jalapeno Pete's um, discussion, and what I wonder is where we can find compromise. Um, I think with some of the pedestrian stuff, are there ways to, for example, encourage uh, ride sharing or any sorts of things with the restaurants or, or, or businesses? So I'm a little naive, I guess, but what, where I would uh, see the Studio City residents or not the neighborhood council um, taking place is really uh, facilitating that and coming up with um, some reasonable um, compromises. When I, Lisa Sarkin with Loise, when I was the chair of the Land Use Committee, we diligently wrote many different types of lists of conditions that we asked businesses, people building um, multi-unit buildings, and uh, we tried to do something related to the liquor licenses, but we were not allowed to do that. And we have always strived to have a balance, not just with the businesses, but the homeowners that are building gigantic houses. I worked for five years on the baseline nationalization ordinance. We used to meet every month with at least two or three applicants that were applying for something, whether it was um, some type of change to their CUB, their CUP, or just opening up a new business. And I have diligently tried to work with the Jalapeno P people. I can hear that with my eyes. Um, hi, I'm Alex Zbicki. I believe that. Actually, I believe Ms. Sarkin is one of the best people uh, that knows the system better almost than anyone uh, as far as land use. I myself, though, would put myself aside as not using possibly favoritism depending on where things are located and not located and kind of strike that balance between what's reasonable. Everything's reasonable. Parking garages that take out half of a mountain might not be reasonable. Maybe a jalapeno pizza is reasonable, but because it's in close proximity to one of us, we become nimbies and we slam them. Stop. That sometimes happens. So what happens is, is basically, we need someone out there that is blindfolded, that takes everything into consideration, irrespective of whether they're holding favors with a, with a certain uh, entity or not. And that's what I promise to do. Thank you. Hi, Janine Milne. I think that this question is one of the most important things that the Neighborhood Council can do. Um, and there have been times that it's been successful and not successful. And essentially, the Neighborhood Council provides a great meeting place for residents and for businesses. And when all is fair and square to achieve compromise, and um, there have been some great examples of that, like the neighbors in Aroma Cafe with their liquor license, and the neighborhood council played a big part in that. And there have been unfortunate episodes like the development of the sportsman's um, landing. So um, I think it's a really important function of the neighborhood council. Thank you. The neighborhood circumcision um, served with uh, the target on the land use committee, which you said is the, the 
is the correct and true story. Uh, as far as building, my, well, my dad built about, I don't know how many, 30 or 40 houses in the city of city. My particular thing was I built the, the Turret Court Theater, 12417 Turret Court, from the dirt upward, and it's still there. We also paid bid money um, for a property on Ventura Boulevard. Alexis well, Steinberg, um, Service Organization C. I think that it's very important that um, all of the, the community of Studio City needs to co coexist. The uh, homeowners and the renters and the business owners, and the business owners need to be able to run their business, but our residents need to be able to enjoy peace and quiet in their home. And so a compromise and balance is truly key. And I've seen some of these problems. I've had valets rushing back and forth on my street, parking cars in front of my home. Um, so there needs to be a, a comprehensive and meaningful discussion as to what can be done to fix some of these problems to where both people are happy. Rebecca Kaplan, homeowners uh, seat. Um, to give a quick example, uh, kids programs are relying on uh, low, uh, low rent. Um, uh, why? Because of affordable childcare. And um, for example, the Christian Church of Woodset would not uh, um, lease space for a kids program due to production needs. Um, and Basically, I think it's essential that we do have more communication with these businesses and um, we make it more kid friendly. Um, on Ventura, we have five, and I have pets, we have five pet stores and I think for children. So I'm welcome to work with the with, with kids uh, to um, support more business and challenges. Hi, Nancy Kramer from Water Seat. I'm a huge, huge supporter of particularly small businesses in Studio City, um, and I'm also a homeowner and I live here, so they're, they're so important. I think that the role of, this, of the Neighborhood Council is to facilitate communication, and uh, that's what I would focus on with the Land Use Committee being able to make sure that you do the reach of all the people that are affected by whatever decisions are being made with the business, that you reach out so that they know there's decisions being made so they can have a voice. Um, I think that's our job, is to facilitate communications. Eric Previn, uh, residential homeowner. I, I think that this is a very important role for uh, neighborhood council to be, uh, you know, a sounding board for complaints from neighbors if they have issues. Um, I think it's important that people who serve on the board, and even on land use delivers dealing with it, be extremely fair and equitable. And I think in the history of time, there have been different, um, you know, roles played by those people. I think there was a great concern that in one of the previous years, uh, one of the land use people seemed to be working very closely with the developer at the Sportsman's Lodge. And it was extremely frustrating for the people in that neighborhood who had issues. They felt very compromised. So I think it's important to uh, play that role fairly. Rick, homeowner, worked in bars for 25 years, also lived over a bar, so I'm familiar with both sides. Compromise is possible. Land use, city planning, and uh, rational architecture are also part of the deal. Also, um, and restaurants and bars are super important as the rest of retail is destroyed by the internet. We've got to keep bars and restaurants. Uh, one way to go is good neighbor discounts. Universal Studios offers Studio City residents free stuff for the pain of having that there. Uh, one way of, for restaurants to be good neighbors is say it. Yeah, you live in the neighborhood, you get 20% off every time you go in. Thank you, Swalving, homeowner. Um, actually, um, as chair of the Land Use Committee, um, I was very happy to bring um, all the Aroma Cafe and the neighbors uh, together. Uh, they discussed it in our meeting and they went back and discussed it again amongst themselves. They came to an understanding and everybody seemed to be happy and the room of that they got there and got their, their devices. Richard Adams, business seat. Uh, I was the chair and half of the advisory committee that came up with Studio City's conditional uh, terms and conditions for liquor licenses. Uh, the other gentleman was in the liquor business and a restaurant owner with decades of experience. 
and we had to balance needs versus realities. We were like, you can't dump bottles at 2 a.m. And he pointed out that you can't leave them in the building because it'd be a health violation and they'll get in trouble. So we balanced it out. But these terms and conditions only work when the land use committee actually invites the people in and they're not they're adjustable, but they're not set in stone. It's a point for negotiation. Well, from 2016 to 2018, the land use chair found that doing this sort of thing was a lot of work. So we got a bunch of liquor licenses in with no review whatsoever. That has stopped. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to echo a lot of what Rick said, and oddly enough, also some of what Richard said, which I never thought would come out of my mouth. Um, but yeah, I live direct in the hill directly above what would probably be called the Strip, um, right above P71, Laurel Tavern and the rest of them. And it sucks. You know, there's a lot of time it sucks. Late at night, there's people coming in, getting in their cars and whatnot, and it's part of the compromise that I make by living there. I get to, I love where I live. I get to walk everywhere. And because of that, there's also some late night traffic that sucks. Um, and also, I'd like to, I don't know who was saying it, but the, I think the, um, the small business, you know, black market, Mr. Rose, I know the owners of these places. I don't want an olive garden going in there. And if we're not nice to the small businesses, corporate chains are all that's going to come in, and that's going to really destroy a studio city. So far be it for me to say I don't like compromise, but I, I don't want to lower the bar so much on people who are supposed to be good neighbors just because they're a business here. If I parked my cars in front of someone's house, or if I played music very loud in my neighborhood, I would get in trouble for that, or I would be held accountable for that. The businesses have every right to be here. We love to have them here, but they need to play by the same rules and be a good neighbor just like the rest of us. That's where compromise exists. The Studio City Neighborhood Council helps facilitate that compromise, but we can't lower the bar for them. Thank oh, you. Jesse, you were first. I was, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. On the next oh, one. You were first? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm glad everyone remembers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 good. It's wonderful. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. All right. You're a candidate? <laughs> All right, so now we'll get a little more pointed, folks. So, um, I'm going to ask you now we'll get a little more pointed, folks. So, um, with that, uh, and uh, a concerned uh, stakeholder here uh, is looking at this as a, as a health danger that must be stopped. So, uh, in all earnestness, so what, do you, what would you do for those who would be joining the board? Uh, what are you doing if you're on the board uh, to stop Caltrans from stripping all the healthy old growth trees from the sides of highways, um, Sarah Street, etc.? So again, uh, what would you do? What are you doing to stop Caltrans from stripping all the healthy old growth trees from the sides of highways? Sarah Street, et cetera, as a health hazard. Benjamin Steely Bulk, not here. Right, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ben, I'm uh, sorry, buddy. Yeah, um, I have no <laughs> idea about the question. Um, the first thing I do is learn about the issue. Um, so, I mean, that, this is something that's new to me. Um, uh, but with, with, with Caltrans, I think that's where you know, the liaison really plays in. Um, Understanding the issue and seeing if it if it can be avoided, and also understanding both sides of the rationale. There's nothing else I can really say in that except. So. Well, of course, Lisa Sarkin, the employee. Of course, the Caltrans is not going to the state. We have our own problems all around the channels, which is the county, and then the streets are the city. So there's a lot of different agencies you need to have a liaison with. And the thing, I think that part of the reason that they've taken them down so many trees, which believe me, I don't agree with, but it's a haven for people to move in and live there. And so what I had heard from one Caltrans person a while ago is that they were cleaning it all out so that they would not have a shelter to be within their own Um, Alex is a big employee. Um, I, would, I would basically have Caltrans focus on the garbage that surrounds all these wonderful uh, trees and brush. Uh, I think we, we, we can't remove the brush because of their failed policies of, of, of not helping our homeless and not sheltering them. So uh, I, would, I would protect the greenery. I think it's essential. And uh, if other counties surrounding us can do it, even though it's a Caltrans issue, uh, I'm sure the city of Los Angeles can do it as well. Yeah, um, it's, it, it's a huge issue. Uh, Los Angeles is uh, losing its tree canopy. Oh, yeah, you want to wait for a second? Sorry, there's a sorry, nice big helicopter. No, we can't hear you. I want to make sure you can hear. There's somebody coming. <laughs> pizza. Okay. Janine Milne. Uh, 
Yeah, as I was saying, um, LA is dramatically losing its tree canopy, and it is um, a, a, a immense disturbance given that um, our temperatures go up, um, air quality is, is tremendously impacted, and you know, obviously the, the beauty of losing mature trees is terrible. And it's, it's not just with Caltrans, it's with developers making way for bigger driveways with the very large properties that are going in right now, and somehow there needs to be a balance there, and it's a big concern. Richard Hedberg, sir, sir. Um, yeah, I've discussed stuff with Caltrans at their District 17, District 7 headquarters on First Street, you know, and they're caught in so many different directions, it's hard for them to deal because people don't want the trees to be gone because then it will expose the homeless. But they can't take the homeless away because that's a different department. So it's a lot more complicated than that. I just wish that if they're going to take away trees, they're done in a way which is neat and don't leave stuff, or particularly not DWP stuff, cut, cut, cut at an angle. <laughs> Alexa Steinberg, Service Organization C. Um, I believe that the trees need to stay, but there may be an ability to clean up the brush and, and really um, manicure what is there so that we can keep them but not have an issue of homeless if that is an issue. Um, but I think our real problem here is to kind of what Lisa had alluded to was starting a conversation between all the different organizations that come into play here because clearly it's not just Caltrans. It's not just, um, you know, who, who all these different organizations really have a say between all the different um, intersections of issues that are here. So starting a conversation, I think, is the first step. Uh, Rebecca Kaplan, Homeowners. Um, um, I would start from the community and uh, hope that the power is in the numbers. Um, if it's not valuable for the community to preserve their trees and actually be informed, um, I am shocked um, that I actually am not aware that they are removing so many trees on the highway. I do not believe removing the tree is necessarily a humane approach to dealing with the homeless. Uh, Anyway, so um, I do agree it's an extraordinarily complex situation. I do understand that there are that there's so many layers to it, uh, but I would bring it also to the community and, and try to get them sort of interested in it. Nancy Kramer, homeowner. I'm not going to stand because I haven't researched this issue, and I don't feel like I can speak to it because I haven't researched it. But if I was tasked to research it, I would give you an answer after I. Researched it. <laughs> From a residential homeowner, I have not researched it, but I'm a little bit familiar with brush clearance. And today, uh, the fire department, or, or yesterday, was getting some money for people want to clean up fire hazards. And a homeless encampment underneath trees is not a fire hazard. I mean, it may be a fire hazard, but the idea of taking down a tree in a time when we're trying to build up our urban forest when we're doing all sorts of workarounds to save trees for sidewalk, it just feels like we should call Adrian Nazarian and Senator Hertzberg or write them in a short email date, their staff come to our meetings and say, what's going on? This, this is something that we could take action on to find out the facts and then hopefully stop it. Rick, homeowner, I'm just starting to learn about this stuff, but as a general principle, the era of we shouldn't be too car friendly the era of individually owned cars is slowly coming to an end. 30 years from now, most people will not own their own cars, thanks to things like Uber and scooters and global warming, all that stuff. And to we, there should be some recalcitrance and some foot dragging about tearing down foliage because the whole transportation realm is changing. Denise uh, Wobbeck, um, homeowner, um, taking down the tree is, is um, I'm sorry, a real, you know, a bold growth tree it is wrong. Um, and Caltrans, um, the state, is, is one of those things where we have to clean everything. So they just clean everything. They don't listen. Um, I, I've had a, a short discussion with Bob Hertzberg, I've had a short discussion with Adrian, and 
they say, well, yeah, you know, we can try this or we can try that, but I don't think anybody's really listening and this Caltrans runs down the pike the road. I do know that um, some of the trees that they are removing have to do with sound walls they're putting out. Um, and that may be a legitimate idea, but. Okay, if you don't mind, before I start, before I start, I've, I've opened the door because it was getting stuffy over here. But if I fall asleep and start snoring, I think the helicopter was quiet. So it's from the heart. Richard Adams Business. Um, it's been my experience that there's a lot of healthy trees out there that are actually diseased and getting ready to fall over, like the oak tree right down the street from my, our house. Um, I want to see a survey. What this neighborhood council needs to do is have better communications with both our assemblyman and our senate's office, no matter who they are, and also be plugged into Caltrans so that when something like this is in the discussion phase, we can do the review and weigh in through transportation or whoever and say, why are you doing this? You know, We want to see the survey where you're removing trees because you either have to for engineering or because it's not healthy. So lack of information, there are no complex, there are no simple solutions, complex problems, and this is one of those complex problems. So we need better Thank information. You. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> dealing with Caltrans will drive you absolutely insane. I mean, it's, it's up there with LAUSD in terms of just, if you want to see the, the pure definition of, of bureaucracy, of just red tape, of just passing the buck of, can you do this? Well, no, you got to talk to that guy over there in that thing. He's going to send you to two other people in that one. Um, it's the unfortunate answer to this. It's, this is something kind of out of our pay grade. Um, this is something that's going to have to come down from the state. We can do our best to get on uh, Hertzberg and uh, Zarin about it, but it's uh, it's a big, messy situation. But out of principle, I'm an environmental guy 100% and don't want to see any trees being torn down. Yeah, as chair of the Sustainability Committee, this is something that we're actively concerned about, not just with Caltrans, but city and statewide, where we just rip out trees. There's no accountability, there's no system, there's no... There's, what we're trying to do right now is not only put more trees on the protected tree list to make sure that there is that kind of level of accountability, but if they have to be removed at all, if, if all else fighting fails, then at least try to build some sort of mechanism where we can at least move the trees. There's a lot of ways around this. Caltrans, yeah, is a labyrinthian nightmare, but we do want to have these trees first and foremost. About the uh, homeless, I'm also serve on the homelessness committee, um, and I, I don't want to, maybe I shouldn't touch that uh, with this one, but I certainly hope that we wouldn't just tear the trees out to remove that. Uh, just a porter. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I very much uh, echoing what's been said by others uh, value um, Studio City's uh, uh, nature as an environmentally friendly um, uh, and, and, and sort of uh, green, a very green community. Uh, it saved Weddington Golf and Tennis and the, uh, the um, efforts associated with that were what interested me in local politics uh, to begin with, as I imagine is the case for a number of people in this room. Um, you know, uh, Echoing what's been said by uh, uh, Lisa, and Alexis, and, and, uh, and Patrick, to the extent that we can um, reach out very directly and assertively to the likes of Hertzberg and Nazaria and, and anyone else that can that can be helpful, if uh, if Caltrans really is this um, you know labyrinthine mess that, that Patrick's describing, and, and and there's a more effective way to do it, we should exercise uh, all options in that. Uh, in, in, uh, yes. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. Oh, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Some people were showing for 30 seconds from last week, so this 45 is a little bit different. So I like it. All right. Um, so, another pointed one um, on traffic. So, Waze and other rerouting uh, service apps are sending people through otherwise quiet neighborhoods, uh, whether it's traffic or sending people speeding down their uh, otherwise uh, quiet streets. Uh, what are your thoughts on these services? Studio City residents can, or the neighborhood council can, adapt to this change. And that is Eric Kremen. Okay. Eric Kremen, residential homeowner. And I think I understand the question is the ways app and what can we do. Uh, council member Krikorian is passionate about this, as you probably know. He uh, would like to protect the neighbors, and so would I, who are being overrun. But as our president has said, we want to make a system that avoids the congested traffic as well. So I would like to see some kind of a good solution. One idea that he came up with at the budget hearing yesterday was to use the uh, information that fire departments use, communication technology, to um, 
block ways. It's an investor, it's a, they call it a special study. But this is a, a proactive approach to working with them, but you know, not shutting it down because we do need uh, alternatives to, it's not moving at all, but you can't go through a local street. Thank you. Uh, we discussed this in government affairs last night a little bit, and one thing everybody was okay with was uh, speed bumps on some of these streets that are getting wrecked by waves. Um, and you, you have two populations, and most people belong to both populations. The, the hauling ass population, you just want to go 45 miles down Winsett, and the running local area, Aaron's population, where you don't want to get smashed into by somebody going 45 miles an hour down it, so it might require some, you know, some street pinching, some speed, stuff to restrict traffic, and then maybe route traffic to the, the hauling ass streets. Thank you. Well, hey, uh, um, unfortunately, those hauling ass streets get congested too. Everybody gets congested. Um, I've lived here all my life, and I don't rely on ways. I know the streets. Um, and I have, do use some streets, but I also don't go down at 50 miles an hour. I try not to run over my neighbors. Um, there has to be a, a different, some kind of meeting of minds. Denise, hold on a second. There has to be a different, well, we'll pick up with that for, for this. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're, you're one of the people that's kind of low, too, and I want to make sure everyone can hear. you get your time. All right. I mean, there, there has to be uh, a happy medium from ways sending everybody willy-nilly everywhere and, and, and the happy, you know, a street where you can actually walk out and get in your car across the street to see your neighbor. Um, I have been told that you cannot shut down ways that's against the law. Um, uh, it would be a really nice thing, but I don't think it can. Okay. First off, we're in the open period right now for signing up your neighborhood for speed bumps. So if you want one, we can get the neighborhood council of people on the e blaster to put out that information so you and your neighbors can sign up for it. The Federal Communications Commission takes a very dim view of people jamming lawful transmissions, uh, which Waze is. There's probably also a First Amendment issue in there in a nice big lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles, which our brilliant city attorney's office will probably lose and it costs us millions of dollars. It's another complex problem with no simple answers, and 45 seconds isn't even enough to begin to scratch the surface, but there are no miracles these days, so. Oh, I think everyone knows my, my view on this has been pretty well stated. I love ways, I use it all the time. I cut through, I know shortcuts, I go through streets I don't live on, I do it all. Um, I pay my taxes, they're my streets to drive on just as much as there's yours to live on. Um, if you need to cut through my street, totally get it. I'm not gonna be mad. Um, I don't think anywhere in Studio City right now is so crazy that you can't cross the street to see your neighbor. I think that seems a bit much. And yeah, and blocking ways, that seems so extraordinarily unconstitutional that um, it's scary that that's something that's even legitimately discussed at any level of power. Of course, I wouldn't block ways, but much like my last answer, these kind of companies also have to be good neighbors to our community. So before I lived in Studio City, I lived in Beverly Glen Boulevard, which Waze took all the traffic from the 405 and rerouted it right in front of my house. Now that wouldn't normally be a problem except for the deaths that started to happen once a month. And what I would like to stop is for that kind of stuff to happen in Studio City. So the things, actually I'm surprised Rick Rosner didn't say it with his transport er, technology uh, committee idea, we can start to, the problem is, is that a lot of times the technology will outpace law and outpace administrative rules. And so what we want to do is just to try to have a committee that's able to just stay one step ahead as it's coming into these communities. Um, as has been said by others, I, like Patrick, I, I sometimes will, you know, uh, use shortcuts here and go through the hills, streets that I don't live on, but I, I think I, I think it's reasonable for anyone who does that to accept that when you take some kind of you know clever little route, that you might encounter speed bumps along the way. I think it's absolutely reasonable for anyone living on those streets to petition for uh, speed bumps to be uh, 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 utilized in their neighborhoods. Um, you know, these, these, these beautiful winding streets that are you know right up the hill, uh, we're not designed for you know, 50 mile an hour travel. I live immediately adjacent to the stretch of uh, 
carpenter between Laurelwood and Sunshine Terrace that's like, you know, blind curves, and people whip through there, getting from Laurel Canyon to Ventura, and it's wildly unsafe. It's, it's incredible, so I see it firsthand every day. Thank you. Um, I also use Waze. Um, I like Waze. Um, I do think there's also a problem in general um, in residential streets of people just driving way too fast. So I think what we would want to do is use analytics to actually see where the different pathways that are being taken the most, and then and then apply speed bumps to those areas because they're going to be areas that are going to have outsized impact. And I think that's the best way to approach it. Well, I agree. At least the Sarkin employee, I agree with what Patrick said. I don't think that anybody can stop the airways from having ways on it or people using it. Um, I know our streets were not built for the kind of traffic that, that it does cause. Um, we have the same kind of problems with the um, giant trucks that park sometimes several days or several weeks in front of somebody's house that's having filming. It makes an indentation in the streets in the, na in the regular neighborhoods. So I think that's, that's one of the problems that needs to be looked into. That's why we have a transportation committee. Hi, Alex, this is Vicky, employee uh, C. You know, I think Waze is, is really a symptom of, of, of a bigger problem. When you speak with someone in the Midwest, they've never even heard of Waze. Uh, what we have is a lack of proper planning by our city and uh, also a, a large uh, development that's going on. We're replacing smaller properties with a lot larger properties, and this is going to cause more volume and, and density. Rather than try to hide the problem by, by really uh, stopping the one item that is actually helping people get around them to work. We need to go back to the city and say, you know what, we got a traffic problem here, and uh, Waze is one of the ways to help deal with it, but really the problem lays in your lap. That's what we need to do. Jane Milley, uh, service organization. I think that traffic is the one of the really big challenges for the city of Los Angeles, there's no doubt. And the Waze app, um, I, I, I agree with Patrick, with Lisa, with that. I mean, I mean, you cannot probably regulate this. But on the other hand, as I was sent up through Waze to some of the uh, streets in, in the canyon when Laurel was jam-packed, these streets, with people parked on them who live there, do not even allow two cars to pass one each way. It was quite frankly scary. I was scared to drive it. I stopped moving the way back right after that. Um, and I can see where it's, it's a hazard. Thank you. Something needs to be done. Thank you. Richard. Yeah, um, Richard Avery, Service Art. Um, last couple of weeks, they were tearing up the streets near uh, Oakdale, near Royal Canyon Boulevard, they had a sign that uh, said local traffic only. So I, of course, inquired with um, our council office, asking you know, what can we do, can we make signs permanent, local traffic only. And I was assured that they're not traffic engineers, and they, you know, they can't do anything about that. I found that too bad. But what happened is right now, because of the ways traffic Cutting through through Oakdale up to Dodge there's a lot of uh, baby carriages and bicycles and stuff up on the street. There's no curbs, there's no you, sidewalk. Thank you. So, so thank, you, Richard, thank you very much. Alexis Steinberg, service organization. Um, living in Studio City is sort of a blessing and curse, simply because. We have the ability to go anywhere from Studio City. We are at the center of going over Laurel Canyon, going over Coldwater Canyon, the 101, the 134, the 170. So it's not only the people that live here, but everybody's passing through Studio City. And that's really the huge issue that we've got, is this influx of traffic. Um, and I've noticed that I, I work in, in West Hollywood, so I go through the canyons every day, and my private little stretch has now been completely congested. Um, but I think traffic engineering with no left turn signs in certain places like onto Laurel Canyon from the, from the Donna's really fix things like that. Thank you. Um, I have to check out for the homeowner, so I have to speak. Um, I'm for speed bumps, just to make it very simple, but also as a parent driving kids around, I cannot live without ways. 
is just an impossible way to move around the city, not just the real city. Um, so I do understand that it's a very complex thing and I'm not so well researched for solutions. Uh, Nancy Kramer, homeowners. I tried ways that I can't make those left turns so I don't use it anymore. Yeah. And I was a victim of that ways traffic. My neighborhood was a victim of that. And the neighbors just got together and we called and we got two stop signs put in. And I'm telling you, when you put in two stop signs, people don't really want to go down that path anymore because it's slowing them down. I think it's an individual, locale by locale, situation by situation answer. And I don't think there's one big answer for all of that. And back to the top. All right. Uh, we're going to try to get through a few more as quickly as we can. Uh, it's up to you guys. You guys use your time or not. Um, if the majority of stakeholders express their desire either for or against an agenda item before the board, but you don't feel the same, would you support the stakeholders or would you uh, vote according to how you feel? Well, okay. I'll repeat it one more time. Patrick, we'll start with you. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> one more time. If the majority of stakeholders express their desire either for or against an agenda item before the board, but you don't feel the same, would you support the stakeholders or would you vote according to how you feel? Does that make sense? Yeah, I would vote according to how I feel. Um, uh, we have elections, that's what these are for. Um, <clears throat> if you had literally 30, how many residents do we have in the city right now? 42,000. 32,000? 42,000. If you had 42,000 people show up and all, they all felt the same way and I felt different, then you know maybe you, you listen, but just because you get six people to show up and they're yelling about one thing doesn't mean that I'm going to change principally who I am at my core just to appease the six people who are here on one issue. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah, there's times to be a representative and there's times to be a leader, and a true representative would know when to be what and when. I mean that that's really what it's about. And I. I Personally, I would find it very hard to also betray my principles on certain issues, but you know what? If, you, if people showed up and they made the better arguments, then that's a different story. Uh, Jesse Porter. Um, I, uh, I, I agree with what's been said. Um, I, I think that we, we have these elections and we put forth uh, our stances on various issues in order to inform the electorate and, and to hopefully uh, get the appropriate people um, uh, put on the board that reflect the, uh, the majority opinions uh, of the stakeholders. I do think that the you know who does show up for the meeting is a smaller sample size and not necessarily representative of um, of the community more broadly, and especially within the divisions that are indicated by the, uh, the color coding here. You know, uh, we don't get a whole lot of renters showing up at these meetings, unfortunately. And um, not to you know uh, spin this question out into outreach, but that is something that uh, if elected, I'd like to work on quite a lot is getting renters, particularly more involved in attending meetings and then putting forth uh, ideas and concerns. Uh, Benjamin Steele, Bellevue. Um, I, I, I echo all the statements that have been said so far. I, I find it hard to believe, actually, that if all the stakeholders were for something, that I would probably be against it. Um, a lot of these things are actually, you have conflicting uh, priorities, that's why they're here. Um, but I would have to vote with whatever I felt was best in terms of after taking all the necessary facts um, into consideration. Um, and then, and again, I think that is what leadership is, is really stating something and explaining the position as well. This is our employee. Of course, that's the most important thing, to know all of the uh, sides. Also, when you sign the code of conduct, you pledge to listen to all sides and make a decision on your own. So sometimes you don't agree with all, maybe 100 people. It doesn't really matter as long as everyone gets the true information about the project or whatever else that we'd be voting on. Hi, Alex, this is Vicki, uh, employee. Uh, while we do have to show leadership qualities, our job is to be leaders for our electorate. Our job is to uh, echo what they desire. Well, no, we do not counter what they do and say and ask of us. What we do is, if we have an opinion that that's differs, we meet with them and try to see if we can find some type of a some type of a, a common ground. But otherwise, they I am their voice and I am your voice and I'm here to represent what you would like and I will continue to do that if elected. Hi, Jimmy Melly Service Organization. I, I, I really have to kind of agree with everybody in 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 in, in half. Like with Patrick, if yes, there's six people that show up in, at a meeting, 
you know, you do have to take six people into consideration if you have strong feelings otherwise that you feel that uh, a majority of students and stakeholders would not agree with those six people. However, I've seen meetings where quite a lot of stakeholders show up, and, and I do agree with Alex that when you have a real consensus in your community or a large group of stakeholders that have um, a different opinion than yourself, you do have to find common ground, and you are here to represent them. Thank you, Janine. Okay, Mr. Jennifer, service organization is Edward Burke said basically if you let the constituents judgment subject for your own, you're not doing them a very good service at all. That's why you're there. Uh, at the original neighborhood formation in 1998, it was decided that we would be, instead of being representative democracy, we'd be a participatory democracy. How does it work from what your point of view is? Not your opinion, but your, what you actually see. Therefore, what I would do particularly is I, based on my own research, and I've researched everything that's on the calendar for neighborhood council for at least a decade. Ahead. Alexis Steinberg, Service Organization. Um, I think the Studio City Council is here to be advocates for its constituents, um, but there also needs to be some sort of fair and reasonable and unbiased um, attention to our constituents and to our stakeholders. Um, if, I know if I have very strong principles about a certain issue um, and I am uh, at a difference with the stakeholders, I know that it's important for both sides of the issue to be heard and the most reasonable um, and unbiased decision to be made. Rebecca Kaplan, homeowners, um, I see. Um, I really appreciate the question that it brings forth the idea that humans feel. Um, but we all also think so. I hope that I would act more from that integrated approach of uh, brain and heart. Um, I do agree with Alec, uh, Alexa, Alex, uh, the lady that I don't even know your name, Brian, um, uh, that, um, uh, you know, uh, we are here for the stakeholders and we are the representatives that are elected, we are elected by them, and um, that's it. Nancy Kramer, homeowners rep. Robert's Rules of Orders tells us that after the voice of the minority is heard, the voice of the majority is acted upon. And I kind of take that to heart. But that has to make sure that the voice of the majority doesn't have an outside agenda that we're aware of, or the voice of the minority or majority is not informed and has all the information. I think it's a very delicate balance that you have to trust who you're electing, but our job is to the voice of the majority. Eric Proven, residential homeowner, and this is a very hard question because it's the essence of democracy, which I think we all understand is overrated, because if you look at an organizational chart of the neighborhood council or the city, at the tippy top is the electorate, and that is all of you and the people. So, like I think Brian said, getting elected is because you believe that the decisions that these folks will make, whoever you decide, We'll choose the right way, but that doesn't mean that if we disagree and the 10 people say do it this way and it feels wrong to me that I wouldn't stand up and say no, it feels wrong to me, so I would be an A vote, but let's move forward. That's the appropriate stance if that's how you feel because you have to be true to your conscience. And the people. Thank you. Case by case basis with a bias towards what the stakeholders want, but this is an outreach issue because how are you going to know what the stakeholders want? You can't, as Patrick said, you know, be swayed by six people who show up in favor of jalapeno peats. Um, so we need to get more people. Somebody said we have, what, 3,200? 42,000. 42,000, six, only 1,600 of them are signed up to get exchange information with us. And plus, there's another issue, which is like looking at Brexit in England, where a bunch of people were swayed by uh, bullshit advertising. Um, so. Hi, Denise the homeowner. As a board member, you have to look at all sides uh, of every issue. 
Um, you have to, um, if you've got something in motion, I mean, you have to understand what the motion is about. Um, we were elected to represent the stakeholders. Um, do we represent the 1600? Do we represent the 4200? Do we hear from anybody? Um, that's part of the problem. But we are supposed to be the conduit from the people to the city council. And therefore, we have to understand and listen to what we're told. Richard Adams Business. Um, people show up for meetings when their rice bowl is being disturbed or their pet peeve is on the agenda. And I think it was Churchill that said, democracy is three wolves and two sheep voting on who's going to be dinner. So pure democracy is not exactly, it has never worked really in historic history. And the United States is not a pure democracy. I want to get that point out. This board is elected to represent, I'm elected, if elected, to represent, this is stakeholders first, all stakeholders second. Anybody who's known me for a period of time knows that my standards are my standards, my ethics are my ethics. And I will usually, the first thing to do is look for, okay, they're upset about this. How can we compromise? Can we change the emotion? Can we add something, change the language? Work with people, take their concerns seriously, but use your intelligence and find a balance and do what's right. Appreciate Thank you. All right, so we are kind of coming into the home stretch, and there's a, a number of um, questions that are uh, running around the same thing right now. Some of you answered it last week, some of you are new uh, here. So um, some folks feel uh, underrepresented uh, currently right now in Studio City with the outreach, um, with engaging people. So the question is, um, how would you engage the rest of the community? And for this moment as well, why not we throw in, how would you engage your, uh, uh, your category of stakeholders, for example, for business, residential homeowners? How would you reach out to all people in Studio City, and then how would you reach out specifically towards your category as well? And the first question to answer is, will be, Joseph's not here. Stacy Joyner. Jonathan Calhill. Let's we'll start throwing your name. <laughs> Chrissy Cox, okay. <laughs> we the closest to one. Janine Milne. Hey. Well, you know, on as being someone on the outreach committee, um, I as you know that we have um, as I mentioned before, revamped the website. We um, reignited Instagram. And um, we also started posting, and I'm a big believer in Nextdoor, regularly on Nextdoor, um, for all of the events, movies, whether they be, um, uh, you know, um, in urban area, anything going on, whether they be meetings. So that, that would be what I would think would be a great outreach mechanism. The other thing that we threw around Thank you, Janine. Thank you. What's your Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Service Organization. I'm already communicating with the various different uh, organizations that are within our consistency service organizations, going to virtually all of the um, resident association meetings as well as visiting uh, the various different groups, groups various different enhancement groups, uh, friends of the library, friends of the uh, park, um, and other things of that nature. Uh, the uh, Kiwanis, I just want to see what they need. And I think I'm, I'm able to give them the information they want without having a big problem so they don't have to come later and yell at the neighborhood council. Thank you, Richard. Alexa Steinberg, Service Organization C. Um, technology is a great way to reach um, everybody in the community, whether it be Instagram or our, the websites or Nextdoor, which I use quite regularly. Um, I'm able to find out a lot about what's going on. And I think that more and more people kind of want passive information. They've got their own lives going on and they're not going to reach out 
to find out what's going on. It's going to be, oh, I saw this on Instagram. I saw this on Facebook. Um, and I think that's a truly important tool to use. But I also think it's important to get out to the community, to go to the different meetings, to be involved with the businesses and, and events that they hold, farmers markets. I think those are all very important things. Thank you. Um, I do believe that in order to, for people to get into state of trust and um, care are very important and human contact, uh, human interaction. So although I am all for, like, I, I believe that now we can revert technology, um, creating a sort of black parties and, and anything even the old fashioned approach of bringing certain things back and meeting your neighbors uh, in whatever shape. Um, you know, uh, the community is made of 40% 40, 40 families, which is not 18, I know this is my, my passion, uh, but uh, there is something in the human element in meeting people face to face. Nancy Kramer, homeowners. We need to reach out to the stakeholders in the way that they want to be reached out to. So for some of them, it's going to be emails, for some of them, social media, but for some of them, they're going to need a newsletter in their mailbox once a month so that they can know what's going on. For particularly to reach homeowners right now, I'd love to do a direct mail, uh, a, a box, a direct mail uh, postcard for all of the homeowners in Studio City, at least so that they know we exist and how to find us and then sign up how they, want to, how they want to reach us. I'd love to also work with the realtors in Studio City. That whenever they sell a house, they give a little Studio City newsletter to the new homeowners. Eric Crevin, residential homeowner. I love the idea of a newsletter-like update. There's some other neighborhood councils that do that a little bit more, where they, they give you updates about not what's just happening in our neighborhood council and our committees, but also in the community. And I think that's lacking in our community. We need that sort of stuff, so that would be great. I also think having quality meetings and quality experiences brings people back. It's hard when we're in disagreement, and I look forward to you know being a united group and, and hopefully putting some things on the agenda. Part of it is setting the agenda. If the agenda, if you, if you, you know, if you put Burbank Airport aviation and you have a real issue, people will come because they care about it. You know, if you put Harbor Busing as an example, people came and they wanted to know. And those are the kinds of things that bring people out. And uh, I think we need to be open to hearing from everybody. The forums. Thank you. Other people have given the answers. It's farmers market. It's social media. And you can bribe people to be informed. Merchant discounts via social media. Go around to the local merchants, say, you willing to have one day this month where you give 10% off if people come in, they saw it on, so on Studio City Twitter. That means you need outreach people. That can be high school kids who need something to write their college admissions essays about. <laughs> Send them out to Canvas Business. Um, Denise Wilbank, um, homeowner. Um, We've all discussed the variety of, of ways, um, and uh, many of the homeowner areas in, around the um, like little communities, they have a neighborhood watch. We can go reach out to each neighborhood watch and expand our horizons. We can get to all of these people in a smaller group and maybe invite them to participate in a larger group. Richard Adams Business. Um, I'm currently doing something like that. I am working with the bid in the Chamber of Commerce to see if we can get some of the local businesses to staff the Games of Skill at the Totally Awesome Summer Kickoff Picnic. Um, the, we would, the, the council would provide that everybody's a winner prize, and then the business would have, okay, you got one bag in, you get this. Two bags, you get this. They staff the booths, they have their advertising, the council members and the extended family don't have to run around and do everything. I'd also like to see everybody's talking details, and but this idea came to me last week when Rick was talking about we need to add tech to the outreach committee because outreach through tech is the way of the future. And changing the name of the committee based on past experience is much easier than starting a whole new committee and drafting a whole new set of people to be on the committee and hands on hands. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think improving the the experience of the meetings is the number one thing. People who come, like, like you were saying, you first showed up because you had a problem with the condo building going up next to your house. That's a real problem. That's something that, and, and, and if you know, we have a, a stakeholder come and show up like that, you shouldn't have to sit through three hours of people arguing about the monthly expenditure report and a bylaws committee report before we get to actual issues. 
that people have, and these people, you know, time's important to people. You know, you, we, don't, we don't have three hours to sit through things that are that important. And, and ever since Nancy's been on the board, she's helped out quite a bit in streamlining these, and I hope that that uh, continues. We clocked in under two hours last one, right? <laughs> Not the last one, but the one before. I got a lot to say, so I'll apologize for going quick. So, Brian Carroll, renter, yes, but it's important to know that even though renters are the only people who can vote for me, I vote on a board on everything, and so I really represent the entire community. As far as uh, civic engagement, is one of my big soapboxes, and it's one of the things that Eric and I have tried to do with the Library's Open Forum series, where if you give something for people to show up to, they will be engaged for it, and there's a lot more things that people can engage with the Studio City Neighborhood Council than just the board meetings. We have to give more, and we have to meet people where they are. Uh, Jesse Porter, uh, I, I agree with that. There's much more than the board meetings. As far as the board meetings go, narrowly, I think that part of the outreach on social media and on electronic platforms of any kind ought to really emphasize what's going to be discussed at a, at a given board meeting, um, uh, really bring it home for people and make it clear what, we're, what the business of the meeting is, and, what's, and, and that goes for the committee meetings as well, uh, not just the board. Um, farmers market 100%. I love the idea of uh, you know a, a meet your council members kind of orientation. I mean, any anyone elected on the board uh, could be there in person, and it doesn't have to just be the farmers market. There are other contexts. How about a Studio City uh, neighborhood council once a month happy hour uh, somewhere? Come meet your council members, and you get a discount. I mean, between Patrick and I, I think we might <laughs> contact. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you much. You can't fund that right, Benjamin. So, uh, Benjamin, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Shadow, I want Shadow, please, for the home stretch. Um, again, my, my peer is actually in this. I work in marketing technology. Uh, what we found is that things really start with face-to-face uh, -face engagement, and then are sealed with digital. So face-to-face -face engagement, sealing with single uh, emails about events, and then finally like Facebook and Instagram. Uh, the other thing that uh, you know is, is creating meaningful events uh, to things that people are interested in, and then expanding that circle based on response to those events. So constantly um, inspecting and adapting that. And the last thing, actually, I was talking to Lisa over here, and she has all these Studio City swag is really creating a sense of pride in the community and actually having things like I love Studio City and those types of things to kind of get out and about within the community. The way that we build, Lisa Sarkin, the way that we build our more than 4,000 email list was by having these things, these things, all of these things that we handed out at our events. We had, we said to people, Give us your email address and we'll give you one of these. And that's how we collected them. At every single meeting, at every single event, everywhere we went for anything, including at least once every three months we had a booth at the, uh, um, the farmer's market. Always important, always necessary. And to keep up that list, you have to keep getting more and more and more and more people on it. I'm sure that we do not have that happening now. And as for the website, there's not a single page on the website that has the real Thank information you, on it. Thank you. It's true, we need swag. But the thing is, is that with technology and swag, uh, our, our, actually our attendance has actually been pretty maintained with this new uh, uh, board. Uh, what has happened is that, is that you can give them as much swag in the world but if you're not going to listen to them and you're going to rush through the meeting because you want to get home after two and a half hours, this is only one night a month, guys. I don't care if it takes five, six hours. This is a culmination of all the committees coming together and voting on very important issues. So if someone wants to get home in two and a half hours, maybe they should find something else to do because we're not here to rush through a once a month meeting. We're here to listen to the people and be effective. Thank you. That's right. I have one last question before we uh, call it a night with uh, closing, and my uh, last question will be, if an agenda item is before the board and the applicant is a very close friend, would you recuse yourself or would you participate in the discussion and vote? One more time, if an agenda item is before the board and the applicant is a very close friend, would you, recu would you recuse yourself or would you participate in the discussion and vote? Raduka. Okay, does that happen until more night? Yes. Yes, what? <laughs> Perfect, thank you much. Nancy Kramer, homeowners. Not only not only um, would I recuse myself, of course, but but even even if it's not a good friend of mine, if I had an if I wanted to speak on the topic, if I had an opinion, 
I need to recuse myself as um, as a chair of a committee or a chair of the of the board in order to speak on it. That's Robert's rules of order. So you need to recuse from that motion so that you can speak on it. Eric Brevin, residential homeowner. Um, I would recuse myself if my best friend or a good friend had a piece of business before the board. Um, but I have questions about recusals, and it came up during the Harvard Westlake thing because people who lived nearby were impacted by the potential decision. And some people were saying they should not participate. And it seemed completely crazy because there was no real, the argument that it was a financial stake because they lived in the neighborhood and Harvard Westlake's decision going one way or the other would result in an impact. But which impact? So I felt that those people should be able to vote. I really felt that way. So I think it's a case by case, but in that case I would recuse. Also case by case with a bias towards recusal, just to, that way you avoid con, you know, you avoid your friends saying, why didn't you vote for my shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, Denise Wobbe, homeowner, um, if it was a close friend or I had business dealings with that individual, I would recuse myself. It's Richard Adams, business district. Uh, I'm blessed most of my good friends live away from Studio City, a couple of them live in military cemeteries, and they don't have that much influence on me anymore. If I were to develop some sort of relationship with somebody in the neighborhood and it came up, uh, I would at the very least announce the relationship and probably seek guidance from the city attorney's office as to whether or not it should recuse. My ethics are pretty strong, and I probably wouldn't need to ask the city attorney. I'd be able to either explain why it wasn't a problem or I'd recuse myself. Uh, yes. Yes, you would recuse yourself. Yeah. Thank you. I'm uh, lucky enough to have made some of the friends on the board, and I certainly wouldn't recuse myself if one of them put a motion uh, before the board. But I will say, I, people who know me and people who are friends with me will know that friendship is not enough for me to support you. And I will go to bat for the contrary opinion if I need to. That being said, if it was a family member or a friend of, of, of the town and they had a motion that affected them, of course I would uh, recuse myself. Of course you would recuse yourself. It's just ridiculous not to. Uh, Jesse Porter. Yes, I would, uh, I would recuse myself uh, in those circumstances, especially uh, uh, if given counsel to do so by the city attorney, which I would see. Uh, Benjamin Silly Bucky. Yes, I would recuse myself. Lisa Sarkin, employee. Every single person that become, becomes on this board has to take an ethics exam. And it clearly states what you have to do to recuse yourself. And of course, I would do it. I always have, and I always will continue to do it. Oh, this is Vicky. Uh, yeah, of course, we would definitely have to recuse, recuse ourselves if we have a, uh, a friend or some type of interest uh, with, with, a, with anyone, any entity. Uh, but I do agree with Mr. Previn that when there, are, when there are issues that are geographically close to people and some people are actually getting involved vis-a-vis -vis the uh, neighborhood council to try to have more impact, I think it's very fair for them to continue to be involved because having a financial change should be changed to having a financial negative impact should definitely be something that would not uh, make someone have to recuse themselves. In fact, it's the whole reason why they should be involved because they are going to be impacted. So whether they benefit, I think that is a different issue than if it's going to be Thank you. Hi, Janine Milne, Service Organization. Yeah, this is where you take an ethics uh, course that if a friend of ours, or, or we gain financially, brings a motion in front of the board, then um, we, we have to refuse ourselves, and I certainly would. It's a dangerous service organization during the Greek theater manager, which wanted to be taken care of by uh, just a relative. I did recruit myself, but to me, the most important thing is disclosure. And it will probably lead you just to, uh, you know, stepping aside, but the people is entitled to disclosure as to why. Alexis Steinberg, Service Organization C. Uh, I'm an attorney, so I'm very familiar with conflict of interest. Um, I would absolutely refuse myself if it was somebody that was close to me, family member. Um, however, if I had a very strong opinion um, and really wanted to be heard on the issue, I would consult the bylaws, the ethics rules, to see if there were other ways that I could be involved in the discussion um, without having some sort of a bias. And I absolutely uh, agree that disclosure is key here. Thank you. 
That's it. All right. So we are going to come into the uh, uh, closing uh, summaries of everybody. But first, I want to let everyone know, May 16th, 4 to 8 p.m., Walter Reed Middle School Auditorium, 4525 Irvine Ave. Please come up here and take these at the end of this. This uh, lets you know uh, where to vote, when to vote, times to vote. Uh, we have over here these wonderful uh, uh, documents that are needed to vote as well. But uh, with that said, uh, you guys each get two minutes to close and uh, use it if you want. And the first person, uh, Yanni Raz. Okay. <laughs> Next person, uh, Richard Adams. Two minutes. Okay, uh, Richard Adams Business, I um, think it made it pretty clear my experience, my background, my willingness to work. I'd like to point out the meetings run long. Meetings exist, committee and board, to listen to stakeholders. Traditionally, unless you've got 50 or 100 stakeholders there to speak on something, they run long because council board members haven't done their homework. <coughs> they talk past each other, they argue about things, they go back and forth and around, around, around. That's where your meetings take forever. It's not the stakeholders, because the whole existence of this board is to listen to you people. So silencing the stakeholders defeats the purpose of having neighbor council. And we know who does the silencing, and we know why they don't want to listen. Okay? So we need to embrace, we need to embrace the 21st century. We need to embrace the changes that are coming, but we need to embrace them in a manner that doesn't destroy the neighborhood. It re is respectful of everybody's quality of life in the business district and everything else. And remember, there are no simple solutions to complex problems, especially in taking decades to come in place. And the government is good at spending money, but they're not really good at solving issues. So what we need to work on is communications, teamwork, work with the other forces in the neighborhood, SCRA, we had Chamber of Commerce, all the other people that Richard mentioned from the service organizations, network the neighborhood councils that work near us, be participatory in the Valley Alliance and neighborhood councils. There's a lot of good information there. It's another meeting that runs along because everybody talks and they talk past each other. But I usually come home with three or four pages of notes of things that are important to our stakeholders. And that's another thing we dropped the ball on because somebody went and said, oh, it's long. Welcome. You're on the board. It's work. If you want to be a good member, it's a lot of work. And if you hold an office or a committee chair, you're going to be real damn busy, above and beyond whatever it is you do in your real life. I've put, I've put in the time, I've demonstrated I can get that kind of effort, and if elected, I will continue to work at the level I've been working at for almost two decades now. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, so obviously I think a lot of those are thinly veiled shots at myself, which is fine. Um, in terms of getting the, the meetings running fast, I actually agree with what some of that guy just said in the beginning, that yeah, the problem with it is a lot of uninformed board members, a lot of board members who don't really do much for the board throughout the month and think that there is actually just a one meeting a month and it'd be great if that's the way it really was. But some of us are doing this every day, have something to do in this. And uh, so yeah, then when you show up to a meeting and there's uninformed board members who just feel like they want to talk, 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 whenever the thought crosses their mind, they think it's their time to go ahead and say it. That's when the meetings run long and that's when, um, especially first time stakeholders who are at meetings, get really frustrated by watching that. Um, whenever there's a first time stakeholder, I know who they are. I always go up to them before the meeting, introduce myself, ask them, what issue are you here to talk about today? Because if I see that there's more people here from one issue, I will move it up in the agenda. We've all seen me do that. Um, I'm not concerned with the same two people who come to all the meetings. And you know, if they think that I'm trying to silence them, that's fine, I'm not. I'll give them whatever constitutional time they need. But yeah, I'm not interested in their input on things at all. Um, I couldn't pretend to be. Um, especially people who come and talk with puppets and whatnot. You know, yeah, I'll give them all the time that they need, but no interest in what they have to say, none. I'm not gonna hide it behind that. And so um, I know no one here is really gonna be voting for the renter seat, so I don't mind anyways. And um, on that note, I hate to say it, but I have to run. This has been a blast. See you guys. All right. So uh, Brian Carroll, renter. You guys have been a wonderful audience today, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, but as a big old civics nerd, I really appreciate you guys spending your Thursday night uh, for the last two and a half hours in a gymnasium in a park. Um, the only thing I, I want to say is just, I know how much work is involved to do here, and I know it can be accomplished. I know we can do big things. I hope, that, I hope I've earned uh, your vote in two weeks, and I hope, to, if elected, to keep earning that vote for the next two years. Thank you very much.
Uh, Jesse Porter. Um, I was uh, 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 added to the board to fill a vacancy that was created uh, when, a, when a board member um, unfortunately passed away. And he, uh, his legacy is important to me because he did tremendous work uh, with, the, with the homeless community. Um, we didn't really get into that uh, issue all that much today, um, at least directly. But and it is a huge issue, and I, um, I won't attempt to, to, to get into it in two minutes either, but I am confident that we as a, as a body have the ability to make really positive uh, uh, impact in, uh, in that realm. Um, uh, I was inspired, as I said earlier, to uh, become a little more involved in, in Studio City politics um, by uh, the fights that uh, other members of uh, the other members and candidates that you see up here um, were uh, fighting. Uh, a couple of years ago, and we don't have a pedestrian bridge over cold water right now. Um, there still is green space at Weddington. It's, it's you know it's gonna be different, but uh, there, it's some version of it will will uh, persist, and that's really a, a testament to the the ability of the board to create um, really proactive, positive change with uh, in coordination with and uh, in, in concert with the community more broadly. Um, I'm proud to be a board member right now. I, I hope to continue to be, and I hope to continue to uh, engage with the community very actively uh, uh, moving forward. Okay, hey, uh, Benjamin Bel Steely Belke. Um, I just want to say thank you all for uh, showing up. Um, this is actually one of the things that I'm, one of my New Year's resolutions was to show up more and uh, participate more in the community. Um, what I would like to bring, um, if elected, would be that community participation side. Um, I can't say a lot about the language stuff. I do not have all that technical uh, knowledge, um, but what I do feel I can bring and what I've demonstrated in the past is, is real community engagement and, um, and constant communication. Um, I do understand the long board meetings too, and I would, I would hope to be able to at least time box some of those issues uh, to make as efficient use um, of people's time so that we can see um, increased engagement over the long, uh, long term. So. Lisa Stark, an employee. Almost all of you know me. You all know what I've accomplished while I was on the board and since I have not been on the board for the last three years. We need to get the community more engaged. They're not engaged anymore. There aren't enough people that come to the meetings. There's not enough information that goes out on a timely basis. Instead of waiting until 72 hours before a, 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 a meeting that an agenda gets sent out, it should be sent out several days before. In fact, our Wednesday meetings, the, all the agendas and for any meeting that's on Wednesday should go out no later than on Friday so everybody knows that that's what's going on. We used to hand deliver flyers to the 500 foot radius all around any development when I was the chair of the Land Use Committee and the committee chair before me. That's how I learned what to do. Everybody needs to participate. That doesn't happen with this board now. There's only a very few of them that are participating enough and everyone, all 15 or 16, need to be doing it. Hi, I'm Alex, the employee seat. Um, I just want to mention that we have a, a very excited, exciting group of, of people here with a lot of energy and enthusiasm. And they may not have the expertise as, as maybe some people who have been on the board in the past, but just their thirst and their desire to do right. I would take that way over someone who knows how to do everything and goes through the motions, but maybe every now and then, eh, you know what, I'm going to kind of lean on this direction, I'm going to kind of lean in that direction. That's with any board member. Uh, uh, the fact that people are enthusiastic is everything. And the fact that we're introducing technology now with, with these new candidates, I'm really excited about that and I would love to work with that. What we have coming forward is a huge, huge development that's going to be happening and impacting our green space at Weddington. It's now more than ever important for every stakeholder to not just look at the individual seats that we're, 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 we're representing, but look at the board in its totality. Because this board is going to be a board that's going to have to represent the constituents and not special interest and no one that they may know, developers, etc., etc., which in the past we have been unfortunately veered with that problem. So when you go to the voting booth and you start voting for all of these candidates here, take a look at who you're voting for. Make sure that the person that you're voting for is really truly going to be in your corner and not embedded with, with the narrative of possibly special interest developers and our own city. So I encourage you to do that 
And I also want to thank you for coming tonight, and I hope you'll uh, vote for me for the employee seat. My name's Alex Spicky. Thank you. Hi, Judy Milne Service Organization. Um, I, I, I'm a proud member of State Cold Water Canyon, along with Alex and along with Heidi McKay and our audience here. Um, that that true grassroots um, citizen activist group really um, inspired the community. I, I, I disagree that there's not been engagement with the community. Two years ago, our community scored a victory that State Cold Water Canyon helped spearhead that is kind of famous now amongst other communities who are fighting their own um, development uh, development situations that are, are really threatening the, the lifestyle and the environment of their community. We are a canyon community, and um, we do have a lot coming up. I'm excited, Jesse, that you felt that that really inspired you. So I believe that there was tremendous engagement and a huge citizen and stakeholder victory for um, for Studio City, we do have a, a major property coming up, the Weddington property, which has been guarded by this community for 20 plus years with people sitting in the audience who have been vigilant um, in protecting this most precious, precious property. We also have SD50, which Richard mentioned. It will take development, high zone development, away from local, not just Studio City, but Los Angeles, and put it in the hands of the state. So that's a very serious situation. And another thing that the City of Cold War Canyon is interested in, and all of Studio City needs to be, is the Burbank Airport situation, with the whole um, flyover of the airport noise through our hills. The way stations run through all of our hills. So I'm here dedicated to protecting all of this. So I, I, I ask for this Thank you. one. Chris. Here I'm Richard Universe, the Service Organization. So you continue, which includes all the organizations, including Save Whole Water Canyon, which was added just, just over three years ago before the election because they had something to say. All these service organizations, churches, business groups, should have something to say. I hope they didn't do so. Please vote to me and have a good day. And by my position is of course on the papers that I hand out to be helpful. Alexis Steinberg Service Organization. Uh, That's a whole of two seconds. That was good. <laughs> Sorry, right, so sorry, the dramatic pause here no, for the helicopter. Was trying to see, right? It was it? Oh, it's my turn. No, 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 but you're right for a moment. I think it's, it's going around. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. You, you speak loudly, let's go for it. Uh, Alexa Steinberg, Service Organization C. Based on all of the questions that have been posed tonight um, and the answers that have been given, I've, I've come to become a little bit more familiar with the issues that are important to Studio City. Um, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for all of you that showed up, that wrote questions, that voiced even your concerns. Uh, although this is not a, a um, Studio City Council meeting, I've been able to hear the issues and verse myself a little bit more in them. Um, and really, I, I want to let you know I'm, I'm a mover and a shaker. And I think that, uh, you know, I represent the best interests of Studio City, of its community members, of its business owners. Um, and I will be an educated, reasonable, and knowledgeable advocate for. Uh, everybody who shows up to the meetings, who voices their opinions, um, and I'll make friends and have fun doing it. And I'm excited because I've heard all of the great ideas that have been posed, and I've heard all of the great um, challenges that Studio City's faced, and I'm really up for the challenge, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, and I operate with integrity and honesty, 
and I hope that I have your support um, on May 16th at your vote. Thank you. Um, so I want to clarify a bit why I'm so for parents and children. Um, certainly I'm not going to go to the personal reasons, but <coughs> families really are 40% of this community. And if anyone raised children, they know the time it takes. And the fact that we as parents are single, we have a single vision, and that's the offspring. So really, if you want to get half of the population to be interested in this community, you have to kind of give them what's in it for them, for their children. And that's not just schools. Uh, we as parents put a lot of schools and we created a lot of tension between the schools and parents. And we have to understand that really, the whole community is responsible of raising these children. Um, if my children walk down the street and they go and get a juice, I really want everybody's eyes on them to, for the safety of this community. So I'm here uh, to really, I'm, I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> his hand is traumatizing me and he continues to do that. So thank you so much. I love you both. Thank you. I'm Nancy Kramer, homeowners. I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. I hope all of you get our emails. If you don't, please sign up for them. I want to thank Michael for being a fabulous moderator for us for these last two events. And I, uh, I'm asking for your vote. Homeowner. Thank you. Eric Preble, Presidential Homeowner. I'd also like to thank the moderator and to thank all of you for coming out on a Thursday. Uh, some of you for a second time, perhaps. But, um, you know, I'm also a bit of a civics nerd. I, I love that we do this. And I love listening to the my, my co-candidates uh, talk about their ideas about you know, Studio City and the future of Studio City. And I look forward to continuing to do that uh, if, we can, if we can, you know, get elected to listen to you and to the so many um, competing interests, but to bring a kind of um, a community feeling that has always been in place, but I think can be more united. You know, we, we know how to disagree. And I think that's another thing that I really stand for, which is to be um, as fair as possible. You know, I mean, obviously, if you have strong ideas, you may disagree, but I think that we have to learn, uh, this is not just at the local level, but across, you know, jurisdictions, to be more um, open and cooperative with one another. And I just say, in concluding, that, you know, like, if kids came to our meeting, if we all behaved the way we would want to behave in front of a group of children, it would be much more interesting, and the people would ask questions, and they would get answers, and the folks would get a chance to give comment time, and am I out of time? No. Oh, okay. 50 seconds. 50. You've got the one finger. That's all. Sorry, now, now, now I'm looking at people. So three people out. No, the one finger. I thought I had one minute. The one minute. Yeah, you do. Now you do. 45 seconds. No, but my point, I'll go back to the analogy very quickly to concentrate on that for a minute. If we all behaved as if, because civics is so important, and what about the children of Carpenter and Rio Vista and Riverside? Don't they want to know? I mean, this should be a hall packed full of people, and it will be because the ideas that these folks are bringing and you know, our efforts to behave better and to be um, cooperative are what will bring Studio City the continued, um, what I consider, um, special place in the city of LA. Studio City is uh, a petri dish for the rest of the city. If we behave well here and set this up right, people will want to emulate what we do here as they have in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, homeowner, priorities, outreach, um, uh, maintaining healthy businesses, addressing issues of transportation and development without wrecking the character of the city, which probably involves fighting SB 50. Everything I've heard about it says not good. We don't want to throw up a bunch of big dumb buildings that will look not good in 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and in terms of the experience stakeholders have at board meetings, make a priority of getting most stakeholders done with their business and out the door in the first 40 minutes. If you have 100 people showing up, look, try to figure out which issues affect most of the people who've showed up, get rid of them first, and you know by the time you're on to the second hour of the meeting, you've got 30 stakeholders left. Thanks, uh, vote for me. No. <laughs> Denise Wilbank, uh, uh, um, we've heard a lot of really good things here. Um, we, need, we know we need to get out and see the people. Um, we haven't been able to do that for lack of 
people who wanted to help. Um, but we need to go to the farmer's market. We need to talk to you. We need to find out what it is you want. We need to hear. Um, we have a wide variety of committees. We need people on our committees to bring new and um, new ideas to us. Um, and so we can you know, discuss and, and learn and, and make everything better. We don't want SB50 to run around and build six-story buildings and, and make them all nice and fancy and lose all of what we are. Um, we need people who want to be involved. And I think you've seen a whole bunch of people here who want to be involved. Um, and I hope I get your vote on the 16th. And that's it, everyone, for the second studio.